What's End up, the ladies show. and gentlemen? <laughs> Welcome to episode 180 of the Planet Destiny podcast. The one where we had a bit of a hell of a time getting the show going. Baby. What hell of a time. Understatement. Oh, yeah, fine. Can, can we just take like a minute to talk about all the crazy things that happened before we could go live Yeah, we can today? take... Let's do I it. think that's fine. Man, we, we had can do a rundown. camera issues. Discord didn't want to play nice. We had audacity issues. It didn't want to pick up man's microphone. We had stream issues. For whatever reason, Twitch decided, nah, you can't use any of the servers in your state. That's how I fixed it, by the way, guys. <laughs> I had to t- I had to pick a server. I had to pick a server four states above where I live right now. Wow. Then it connected us. Ugh. But it was all worth it, because we're bringing you oh, another wonderful God. show here on a Sunday evening, and mm, do we have a guest for you tonight? Mr. One Actual, thank you so much for joining us, man. Oh, dr- hey, yo. Oh, no. hey, yo, I'm just going to switch it real quick. Yeah, ah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hey. All jokes aside, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the invite or reaching out to me. Yo, come on over. I was like, yo, I want it. Let me get in here. Let's have a good time. Let's have some fun. And let's give them a good one. I'm glad to have you on, dude. I know we talked a little bit about uh, coming up as broadcasters. And you know, a lot of times it's like, working from within and building your community from within and kind of like not not all on your own but um you've done a really 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 good job you know of building a a phenomenal very loyal very welcoming community you should be pretty proud i I just you want to take a minute to to kind of like well, I'll, did we do all the introductions yet? I don't even know if we do all the introductions. Yeah, no, we have to go to the guests. Right, they know do that who first. We are. Do that first. <laughs> the names on the screen, they can see it. <laughs> Dan Finity, the Black yeah. Link. I'm Aura. That's one actual. And uh I just what what do you what do you do on Twitch, man? What do you do with the Destiny community real quick? For those who don't know who you are somehow. Well, one actual, you also know me as Jay. A lot of people call me Jay. Uh, I mostly do PvP content, uh, help people get through uh, some of the hardest content in PvP. Uh, I grew up through trials and helping people every single weekend uh, go flawless. And uh, currently right now I've been helping people get Lunas, not forgotten, and I'm gonna be helping um, people get the uh, the mountaintop as well. Just everything comp related. Um, I understand that it's hard for people to get groups and matchmaking, people that can compete, you know what I'm saying, and get those weapons. And so uh, I feel for them. And so I want to just do what I've always done in Destiny and just use my my platform to help Guardians all over reach those uh, those things and realize their potential without making them feel pressured or being being on them. Like, hurry up, man. Come stay. Why aren't you with me, man? What are you doing, bro? You gotta win your 1v1s, man. You got to win your man. ones. You try. You try. <laughs> You know, just just have fun. And it gives me an opportunity also to meet the people that support myself and we get to bond with each other, which I think is really important for any Twitch channel. It's uh, it's funny you mentioned the fun part because I, I hang out just about every morning at work. I hang out and I have yet to get to your channel and find you not vibing, even when things go bad, even when like games might end up in, in a loss. It's It's even your community itself, you guys are just always laughing, having fun, and being chill. And it's like, how? how? Because I'm a casual player, and I'll go into Crucible, and I'll be frustrated within 15 minutes. How do you do this for (laughs) hours with, with, with your friends and not lose it? How do you not lose your shit? You know, um... There's there's some days, you know, say as far as the game goes, because we all understand that, you know, things with PvP and, and whatnot and, and where we kind of want to be when we miss. But um, it just comes down to, um, like, I, I don't know, I kind of got a big heart when it comes to this. A lot of passion is in this. And, and when people, I think about the viewers that are coming to my stream and I'm like, these guys are going through something in their lives. Some people, you don't know what they're going through, right? Some stresses, maybe lost a family member, just something going on, right? And, and what I do is I, I just remember that and I'm like, okay. They, they need a smile. They need a laugh. That's what they're here for. They're here to be entertained and they're here to possibly play with the streamer and they're here to laugh. They're not here to get even more salt or or any type right. of negative vibes from me. You know what I'm saying? So if I get those guys to just take a deep breath and if I'm really just triggered, because it does happen, I'm human, I just turn the stream off. I'm like, hey guys, you know what? I'm going to just have to take this one. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting frustrated right now and I'm not going to put that on you guys. So call it a day. You guys be safe and then I'll just host. But um, but yeah, I just I just enjoy it. I don't know. I just I have a good time, um, and we just have fun. The laughs and stuff like that. It's kind of like just playing with your friends. That's all we are, right? We're all gamers. That just want to enjoy yeah. playing Destiny. So, a man with two to three hundred friends at a time. Yeah, 
<laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's a lot of friends, man. A little bit of Good yeah, job, yeah, yeah. man. Really, really great. You're a uh, you're a, a pretty bright beacon in this community. I don't know if you get enough uh, kind words said to you about it, but I, I've been around this directory for a long time. I've been, I've been on Twitch for three years every day uh, for eight to 12 hours a day. And what you do and how you do it, what you do isn't unique, but how you do it uh, is so different from the majority of people who do what you do with this directory. I just want you to know that I appreciate what you do, how you go about it. I wish I was half as good a player as you were because I feel like we'd be in the same boat, but I'm over here uh, potatoing really hard. <laughs> but I, I enjoy watching watching you do what you do at your community. Your community is a really great group of people too. You know, Shout to them as well. You guys, as broadcasters, we're only as good as the people we're surrounded with. So a lot of them people that you surround yourself with are pretty good too, man. So how, how long has this been a full-time gig for you? Um, it's, uh, I've been doing full-time hours, honestly, since the gate, um, because it's just something that I really want to do for the rest of my life. I always told myself I would rather be, you know, you know, content, you know what I'm saying? Doing what I love to do every single day than be like, you know, have, have a lot of money, but just dread work every single day. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, honestly, I've been, uh, doing that, doing some, uh, also some off jobs on the side, you know what I'm saying? To make ends meet. And then I also have my wife, she works as well. And my wife is very supportive of my grind. So I can literally go in bang out eight to 10 hours of stream, you know what I'm saying? Get some, you know, some little side jobs done. You know, she's got my back. She doesn't bother me if I need anything. She'll bring up the food if I'm really like just in it right now. And, <laughs> and it's just kind of, yeah, I just been grinding. I literally kind of live off of about, about four, four to three and a half hours of sleep. And then usually about one day uh, during the week, I'll get like a full eight. Just grinding for passion, just passionate about it. Yeah. Two, mm -hmm. three, four years, still doing it. And, um, and yeah, I, I I don't know. I, I live my dream, man. I'm, I'm I love my life right now. I really don't have any any like gripes about anything. So let me ask you one last question. How do many it. people? We'll start with the Lunas. Do you yeah. have a Do you have a solid number? How many people you helped get the Lunas? This is on PlayStation Four, by the way, guys. Yeah. You have a solid number, Ooh. a solid count. You know, solid no, but I would say eighty-five to ninety-two. I was but say, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get at least twenty to thirty myself. <laughs> since twitchcon so when twitchcon ended is when i i came in and started doing that help so i haven't been doing it for the whole time i actually nobody really in the directory was doing it the only person mm -hmm. i saw and who gave me the idea to even do like the lunas help and stuff like that was a streamer named armada he was the first one before anybody started doing free lunas free of this because it was mostly like you know recov guys were doing it right but he started being the guy to be like do it for free help people out and i was like you know what because i missed that from trials trials is where i got that feeling mm -hmm. of helping people out go flaws oh man thank you so much getting lying out so hard it's just oh i love that you know i love helping people and i was like you know that's a great idea i'm gonna start doing that and now the, the awesome thing is i see the entire directory on it yep. they all have mm -hmm. their own styles Absolutely. and ways of doing it but it's the whole point is that guardians are getting help because we all know whether it's raids or comp you got to find a competent group Otherwise, you're going to be stuck for hours and hours. And, <laughs> yep. You know, and LFG requirements are, let's just be honest, I don't even have those LFG, LFG requirements. I can't even reach them. It's funny when he uh, says that, and Dan and I are soloing the Shattered Throne. We're basically, we're our own, S our, our own like LFG, and we're smacking our faces against the wall for eight to ten hours. And can't crack about the when you don't have any. It's like, it's sweet, all on me, dude. It's all on me. Face smashing action. It is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, raiders so are a different group. I'll tell you that. Really uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, if you guys have any questions for one before we move on to anything else Destiny related, you guys fire away. That's all I wanted to, to give my man some praise and ask him a few questions about the right grind. On, man. Right on. And, you know, of course, we're happy to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. And uh, of course. I love the entire premise of that. You know, I was a big proponent of, um, of Sherpa carries and all that kind of stuff way back in D1 with trials mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff with raids. I used to run basically raid Sherpas on my channel for, you know, a couple of years when it came mm -hmm. to D1 and all that kind of stuff. So it really made me happy when I saw that this was starting to build up around the Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten grind. And it, you're, you're absolutely yeah. right. It really exploded. Even um, Fallout, Fallout, somebody used to be on, on the show here. He does that yeah. every weekend now. Every weekend he does mm -hmm. Luna's Howl Not Forgotten grinds to get people their guns. And um, I love that. That's just that's something unique to the Destiny community. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> we've got a couple of new things to grind for as of, uh, as of this past week with the new Pinnacle weapons and whatnot. Uh, for yeah. the mountaintop, but I did have a couple of questions for you because, Do it. Uh, ooh, ooh, 
about to drop oh. it, man. We're dropping an interview right here. Oh, yeah, job, man. Son. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. So I, I, I always want to ask this of our guests because everybody's got a different story. How did you okay. get into Destiny? What was, your, what was your story with this franchise? This is actually interesting. Okay, check this out. When Destiny came out, I thought the game was doo-doo. I didn't like it. <laughs> Wouldn't have to do with it. I'll say it. Yep, I got you, know, you man. Don't hate I got me, you. Chat. You got to say how it is. I, I didn't like it off the rip. I was like, I was like eh, you know, I have my reasons, right? Yep. I have a cousin. Uh, his name is Joshua. His also name is Jane Nine Rip. So the people in chat, they probably have seen him a couple of times. He was always trying to get me to play this game. He bought me the game. He's like, let's play it. I was like, oh, oh my God, he bought me. All right, let's play a little bit. Then mm-hmm. I would stop. And then he was like, he bought me Dark Below. He, he would just start <laughs> buying me the DLC just to play with me. And I was like, all right. I was like, I'll play with him, you know, because in my, my opinion, it's like, dude, you spent all this money yeah, you know, for me to play. I was like, I'm not going to leave you hanging and your family. I'll play this as a side thing with you. And so we just kind of playing it. And um, the PvE and stuff was cool. I really liked Vogue. Vogue was very sweaty in the beginning. <laughs> very sweaty. Um, But um, I was really enjoying the PvP. I've always been a person that just like, you know, multiplayer and just playing against other players right. and stuff like that. So I was really enjoying it, but I was bad at it. I was terrible. I was like, I was awful. I was a grandmaster top 50 player in advanced warfare on PlayStation four. I would, I would mess the best of them. I I had the armor when people saw you like, Whoa, you know, I was that good. And I would play destiny. And this is, this is a true thing. I had a 0.37 KD playing a lot of crucible in year one destiny. A lot. What? Yep. 0.37. I was, cause (laughs) I I just like, I was hardheaded. I was just stubborn. I just wanted to play like a certain way and it just didn't work. I would try to play too yeah. much Cossile and jump at people and they would just <laughs> shotgun me and I'd, I'd have like the dumbest setup. We use guns that you never probably never even heard of if I set up and like Sir Isaac and whatnot. <laughs> it's like that blue for hand cannon from D1 and just wondering what was going on. I was frustrated with it. And then, um, but what I noticed is um, people, uh, during House of Wolves is when I started streaming because I, I just found out about streaming through COD people. And stuff like that but i was like i really like this game and trials came out with house of wolves right. you saw like crafty doing it trials with followers and and it was always so intense and so amazing to watch i was like you know what i wish i could get this good so i can do that that is mm-hmm. that sounds like a good time awesome right, you're right. helping people you get that sense of you know and, and then you get to show out you know because you're doing you know quote unquote carry for lack of you know other words and whatnot and stuff like that just help it helps better and um so what i did well you didn't ask me how i Got to where I was, I guess, as far as ah, go no, right into it, man. How did you get here? I, I, what, what dude, how'd you go there? from a 0.37 to a serviceable player? Hello, <laughs> there we go. That, that's that's usually what people ask. How the heck did that happen? Okay, so my thing was, I was like, I, I'm like one of those people that knows, like, okay, if you want to learn something, because I was the primary military, I was a marine. Um, strip it down, so you'll see it for what it is, and start fixing things. Brilliance of the basics. I was like, okay, I would watch Real Crafty. Real Crafty was like the first Destiny guy that. Okay, cool. That um that I was really mainly watching a lot. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna rock what he rocks and just get used to it. So I right. rocked the mm-hmm. last word, dropped my sense to a three when it was a 10, because I used to rock a 12 in Call of Duty. I would use a herb benevolent sniper. I actually got a god roll on the first one. Let's go. Um, and I was and I just rocked the blade dancer, skips, go in there and play. <laughs> yep. And so I would watch Crappy, <laughs> I would see his yo, know, what he does, and I would just go in, get destroyed. Req, go in, get destroyed. Req, it just kept doing it. But I just I was like, what makes a good player is honestly someone that can look at themselves and realize their mistakes instead of just yep. being like, oh he's trash or or he's mm-hmm. using this crappy weapon or oh it's op. You got to be able to look at yourself and be like, okay, wh- why am I pushing him then? Why am I why yep. am I giving him that? I'm, I'm putting myself in that situation. Listen to so, this man speaking actual words of truth. There, continue. <laughs> So I just, I put in hours upon hours upon hours and eventually just clicked. It literally just clicked. Like somebody just fastened a seatbelt. The next thing I know, I was off to the races. That's it. Um, as far as my streaming goes, how I got people kind of in, um, I didn't have any viewers for months. Obviously we all know it's like starting yeah. off on this very saturated platform, but I did something that no one else did that brought my view count up to a 40 in a matter of days concurrent. It was a shocker. All that I did was in House of Wolves. I was the only streamer that ever did Skolas carries after the. Remember the burn got removed. Yeah, People yeah. Just going there yep. and cheese it with Gallerhorn. But after that, you had to do the whole fight. It was a sweaty encounter. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was the Damn. only one that would help, and I was good at it. It was Once one I, of the hardest things that Bungie yeah. ever put together doing Skolas legit. Yep. I yes. spent more hours. I I ran in with an original team of three. 
my two teammates couldn't do it. I refused to leave because I didn't want to start <laughs> over. I just kept bringing people in until I got my clear. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I'm not even kidding. My score sheet, no, no, Jay, my score sheet had over a thousand kills for Skolas. Oh. I didn't leave until it, like you said, you just did it until it clicked. I had over a thousand kills in prison of freaking elders. Anyway, sorry, I'm a little PTSD. No, Glenn, Fine. No, no, no. <laughs> But what cool. it was, was I did a help for a guy who came into my stream just randomly. His name was Emperor Price, and he's actually a friend of me to this day. He came in, and I was eating for some help, and he had all blue stuff. I didn't check him before we could start. <laughs> he had weapons and armor that you would be like, dude, you're joking, right? And as I started helping him, people started coming in the chat because I kept talking about him, clowning him. We were laughing back and forth. And he was saying, we was, I was like, dude, what are you doing using these weapons and stuff? So people came in. I, I'd show them because they would ask, what are you talking about his weapons like that stuff for? They're like, you're not going to be able to help him. Because I was also helping another guy because I would take two. Right. We got it through on the first try. People lost their minds. They're like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. And this is PvE stuff. Yeah. And I, I just kept doing that. Uh, it eventually grew, uh, just being entertaining and doing that. It's about 70. And then one day, one guy was like, why don't you play the Crucible? And I felt like I was comfortable, but I was a little nervous to do it on stream. But I started doing it, and I was hooping, and then it went up to 100. And then it would always be about 80 to 100, 800. And then on PlayStation yeah. Live, because, you know, those numbers go crazy. It started just mm -hmm. going more and more and more. And then I became the number one elimination player in Destiny 1. Uh, I used Sun, Sun Singer with Viking Funeral. We all know how. <gasps> get out get out <laughs> Burn down baby <laughs> but i became number one and that's what really uh, put my name out there and then people started recognizing me real crafty uh gave me a host the very first person ever uh host me then i just the nail word started getting out me and tefty started playing became good friends um and it just it was just there that's really just it. just hard work man and if you want something i'm a firm believer in you gotta put your mind to it, be able to look at yourself and accomplish I won't say everything. You ain't gonna fly the moon. <laughs> you know, what you're doing this. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like angels now feel like <laughs> what you give me. You know what I'm like, he knows the movie. He knows That's the it, movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before, you know, Gordon <laughs> Hoser. <laughs> oh, that was a different one. Different one. Oh, was that Angels Lava? No, that was the uh that was the the kid, the kid who threw real fast. I get them all confused. Uh, anyway. Oh yeah, the uh, the one yeah where Angel his arm broke outfield. weird. Wow. Throw him the cheddar, the cheese. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. I swear, every Probably week with you guys, it's a different '90s movie reference. Stop it. Is that even the '90s? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> early was '90s. Movie, yeah. Early '90s. Mm. Okay, so like you hit so many different things. I know. I ramble. That. My fault. No, that was that was beautiful. That I really hope people paid attention to because a lot of the time. We, we, we always have people come up and say, hey, how do I get started streaming? Hey, how do I get, like, I, I'm, I'm really interested in doing this sort of thing. And mm -hmm. it's all, oftentimes, it's really hard to emphasize the importance of hard work, of just grinding through, pushing through, and doing what you want to do on the platform until you finally take off. So you hit that note, you hit something really important in Crucible. <laughs> people, <laughs> you, pick, pick, hey, man, there's a, a strong loadout. You like using it? Use it. If people are going to complain about it, People are complaining about shotgun rushers right now. Why are you approaching the shotgun rusher? Stay back and get them from a distance. It's, there's so many yeah, bits of wisdom. Friend, Skips and Arc Strider. Do you remember how oh, strong man. that was? And oh. like, I think people forget Ooh. that Arc Strider was like, you can't do anything against this super oh, yeah. back yeah. in the day. Shut Before down, Bungie man. got their hands on it. But Arc Strider was like, <laughs> when Hammer yeah. Titan first came out, and it was Blade just a dancer. tank. Yep. You read them run from the poor Sun Singer with the, what, was there, wasn't there a chess piece that gave you like two grenades too? Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I spent basically like six months of Charles of Osiris just on fire. Yes, you did. Just, just, I, I just <laughs> yeah. never got put You're out. Welcome, that was consistently by the way. burning. You're welcome. That was me. <laughs> you and one, apparently. <sighs> Jesus. Oh, that's that's so I had some man. bad things. I take back all the good things I said about you earlier, dude. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> take it all back. Hey, man. Just got to deal with it. Warlock's got that juice, man. You just got to deal with it. It's just the way it is. Um, so, so that talks a lot about, about Destiny 1, you know, year one, oh lord, Arc Striders in mm -hmm. year one, what a beautiful time it was. But, um, obviously, you still play, it's Destiny 2 now, why don't you talk a right. bit about your time with Destiny 2, uh, right. and how you feel about PvP. Ooh, you know, I want to hear your opinions on PvP in year one, versus right now, especially. I think that's <laughs> gonna be right. a good one. Well, let's go, first things first, this visor came when Destiny 2 dropped, it's been a thing yeah. ever since. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, year one, D2, compared to now. All right, well, I was one of the people that stayed in the directory. A lot of people kind of, you know, ventured out and played Fortnite yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I, I still kind of, you know, I did find some some enjoyment in it. I know I'm like, they'd be like, heaven forbid somebody says that. Like, how dare you say, like, year one? But, you know, yeah. I, I had a lot of fun. <laughs> I like subs, man. I really love submachine guns. I wish they were better now. You know, yeah. they're, they're good. But, you know, good shot. He's macro skating. You only do so much. You know, but year yeah. one um, was an interesting year. Um, a, a lot of people left and uh, I just kept playing it and people still, you know, wanted like, you know, I don't know. I just found fun with it. I can't really say there's not really a lot of stories. There's just trials. I just mainly did trials. I didn't really do comp. I did comp, comp for the Claymore and then stopped. So my so that's mm -hmm. why I'm not having the unbroken title right now. Um, but um, just doing trials, trials, countdown. I liked it in the beginning. Now it's countdown. I can't stand it. I don't know if it's because people figured it out and can cheese it or what, but, and then survival, bouncing back and forth between those weekends. Um, what really just made it fun was playing with people. And I honestly believe no matter what game you play, I, you know, you can have fun with anybody. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're playing with the right, you know, the right amount of people, right? Good people, you know? So mm -hmm. it always just became fun weekends because we would just kind of joke around and just do it and, uh, you know, it's like anything. You play with your friends, you, play, you break out Monopoly. You know what I'm saying? Who yeah. plays Monopoly still, right? <laughs> I'm but get you break it out for some reason because it's just fun to play with your family. So I had that same kind of thing with year right one. On. But um, as far as like the meta, it was definitely not anywhere near enjoyable as far as Destiny PvP goes. Shooting a guy a million times, hoping that he dies, he just runs away. It's like, well, man, I guess headshots don't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. Vigilant swing and graviton lance meta of year one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only way to secure a kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was I, I had to use it, man. I, I was like, you know what? I surrender. Anti OD Graviton right here. Oh man. I did it. Yep. And I hooped with it too. <laughs> the worst part. <laughs> the worst part, man. But um compared to now, I, I'd have to honestly give a lot of credit to Bungie. I was telling people for the longest time that Bungie is the comeback kings when it comes to games. Yeah. I'll give them that. They can make a game sword in the moon. They can, they have that ability. People are like, nah, Bungie doesn't know. No, I'm telling you. I was always saying, I was like, bro. Forsaken is going to blow people's minds. It's going to do mm -hmm. it. I didn't know no information. I just know Bungie. By the next time we get that full year, just like because of the experience of Taken King and stuff like that, and in Destiny 1, I was like, this Forsaken is going to be special. I promise you. People are like, nah, bro, this game's done. I'm like, nah, it's going to be special. They, they'd fixed a lot of things. The PvE in this game, to me, the PvE has always been good. But the PvE, man, oh, I love running around the Dreaming <laughs> City. That's yeah, what I do man. the most. When I play PvE, right. I just love the beauty of the Dreaming City. Mm -hmm. Running around it, how it changes, the ascended challenges. I was like, wow, this is what I'm talking about. Ribbon was crazy. That thing scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is in front of me? You know, you fall down and stuff like that. Oh, I like jump out. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, but as far as the PvP goes, um, it definitely cleaned up. The time to kill got cleaned up. It's not exactly where we want it to be, but it's a it's a mile compared to what it used to be. It's nice to have special. I kind of wish snipers were a little bit more viable because the flinch, yep. you gotta really get that shot first. For the guy can test you, but it's in a lot better place. But it's still not perfect, especially with them taking a step back, giving us a mountaintop to you know go for and a grenade launcher because that's that's been fun for the last you know, <laughs> couple of days. <laughs> I think is that is that sarcasm I sense in your voice? That is sarcasm, man. Let me tell you something. Hey, everybody in chat, you use malicious birthright. I'm coming for that. All right, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I have one of those. That thing hurts, man. You yeah. did one shots you with kinetic people. Malicious birthright. Finally, doo, 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 doo. I'm just like, man, I'm about to put on a scout, bro, or something just to lay in these guys because they're just crazy. But on console, it hasn't been too bad, and it's uh, but on PC, whew, it's, they, it's like they just hit you perfectly every yep. single time with a malicious birthright and it's, it's a lot harder you know but at least it's a change i can't i get where Bun what bungie's doing with it they're kind of just like you know let's change it like it's it's explosion and nade launchers this season and next season it'll probably be like some mm -hmm. kind of auto or sub and then we'll be in that kind of version and stuff like that but as a person that's not really too much of a fan of the explosions <laughs> i mean we'll, we'll get through it and, and we still gonna have fun with it you know it's not as bad as people are saying but Yes, yeah. it's kind of oh, yeah, like a, yeah. eh, you know. You think it's bad because it's the first, I mean, the season five started on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Moses' birthright is the, and we'll get into the pinnacle yeah. aspect of weapons in a minute, but you think the fact that people are out there trying to earn the mountaintop or they just got it is feeding into the fact that you see them everywhere? Do you think this is going to die down in two, three weeks? Yeah, I do. Oh. I think um, personally, uh, it's really good, but um, I think some people are even comparing it. It's just another malicious birthright. 
And um, and once you get to about the legend side, once you get into mythic and legend, people are really just getting it to obtain the weapon. There's not too mm -hmm. many people that really love grenade launchers. You know, the only people that really use it that I can think of is like Sheik. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the streamer yeah. Sentinel Titan. He's like the only one that's kind of like known for it. And a couple people would mess around with it with when his fighting lion uh, kind of made it onto the scene. But I feel like people are going to get the weapon. And once we get into mythic, people are going to go right back to, you know, shoddying and, uh, and you know, just using like good supers and wins and vests. <clears throat> what was that? We'll talk Did about you, that. Can't wait for that nerf on Tuesday. Gwison <laughs> vest. Before we get to that, Bungie is <laughs> using this term called pinnacle weapons now. And yeah. Yeah. in season four, we had what? Two pinnacle weapons. There was the Luna's Howl, and then the step above that was You're Not Forgotten. Right. right. Now we've got three pinnacle weapons and the not forgotten which is still viable for 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 pvp but they're calling these pinnacle weapons and this is a question for everybody but there's nothing really pinnacle about acquiring two of them <laughs> other than playing the game this isn't a pinnacle thing this isn't yeah. a rank thing you know the the strike the the fusion rifle strikes and the gambit one is just a matter of of will a testament of will to play the game play the strike yeah. for 40 strikes or 40 games of gambit you yeah. still have rank tied to the mountaintop, which in my opinion makes it a version of a pinnacle weapon, but I have a hard time using a term pinnacle for something that you you get just by using the specific weapon type and playing this a specific game mode. So thoughts on that. I guess, Dan, let's start with you. Yeah. I mean, so I spend a little bit of time going for loaded question. Really, when it comes to the PvE ones, I'm not I'm not seeing them as something that I have to get right now, something that I really have to grind out at this time. I can probably do it over the course of the season just yeah. by farting around. I mean, I so I did, I will say on Friday, I was like, ah, I got an hour or two to kill. So we just loaded into uh, Lake of Shadows over and over again using uh, Queen Breaker and Main Ingredient. And I just went to town and I was running Arc Strider. I, pretty, I have all of my Arc ability kill or Arc kills I have like 474 out of 500 fusion kills at this time, and I think I ran 18 of the uh, the strikes. It's I it's just something for me. It was something that was a little mindless to do, um, with with some friends for a cool gun. But I I don't know. I feel like I I, I agree. Calling it something pinnacle is is a little um, overstatement. Like if they had tied it to the, the grind of say Zavala, like we were talking about last week, Zavala has the nightfall, right. like uh, uh, slower counts. Yeah, yeah. Tie it to that. Like be like level 15 and also these things in order for it to like, in order for you to get the weapon. But right now, yeah, it's, you you put you persevere you're gonna get it yeah and it but it was super cool seeing everybody like the day of like i think moon <laughs> got it within the first 48 hours i think she didn't sleep <laughs> like, the entire day yeah. i guarantee you didn't yeah. sleep unless you really yeah. used the boss the entire time if you did it legit you did not sleep there's no yeah. way you're talking so, about 15 20 minutes per run if not longer yeah. depending on who your blueberries are good lord yeah yeah <laughs> No one so, knows to throw the damn orbs on the new strike. Like nobody, no, you sit no, in that elevator with those taken shield guys, and you're just you're they're just getting knocked around. The, anyway, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I mean that I after seeing what they are, I really uh, my my whole focus this week was trying to get was getting that solo shattered throne clear, which I got, and getting Wayfarer, which I got. Those right. were the only two things I cared about, really. Pinnacle weapons, like the pinnacle weapons that are for PVE, I can I can wait the rest of the season. Right. TBL. Um. So there's a couple of different things here with this. Uh, first, I want to make note that Nim, our buddy Nim here on the show, got the breakneck on like the second day of the patch. That dude literally did yeah. not leave the Gambit playlist, and that's he's disgusting. always been a, a Gambit sweat. That Mr. is Mr. Dress. <laughs> Sweaty. The unwashed mass of Nim just <laughs> sitting in the Gambit playlist in that queue for like 12 straight hours. Holy sheesh. Um, I've gotten the loaded question, the, the Vanguard Pinnacle Weapon. I got that a couple days ago. Uh, it took me like two days of dedicated nonsense to get done. 
I definitely understand what you're talking about when you say these are you know, not really pinnacle weapons. That's kind of a loosely used term for this stuff, because for the most part, they're not hard to get. Um, right. Even the breakneck, not hard to get. It's like, what, 500 auto rifle kills, 100 double kills with auto yeah. rifles or something like that, and then just 50 Gambit games? That's time consuming, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you gotta grindy, play forty yeah. gambit games. It's grindy, but uh, but it's not hard. Um, the loaded the loaded question, the fusion rifle, which I believe is probably the worst of the three pinnacle weapons. Um, it's it's five hundred you know fusion rifle kills, a thousand arc kills, and then forty strike completions. Again, not hard, just time consuming. Yeah, uh, the mountaintop was supposed to be hard until you know a bunch of tier one players got it on like the first or second day. Um, that, that's probably the closest thing to an actual pinnacle weapon on the likes of, uh, you know, the, the Redrix's Claymore, the, um, the Luna's Howl, the Not Forgotten Grind. I don't really have too much of a problem with, you know, the, their definition of pinnacle weapons. I'm happy that they've expanded the system to other game modes. I'm super happy that they want to provide some sort of in-game reward for people who like to run strikes. I'm super happy they want to provide the same thing for the Gambit game mode. Um, but yeah, this, this is, it, it, it was a little easy. It was a little easy to get done. Yeah. I mean, shoot, being able to get that fusion rifle in just a few hours of play. <laughs> it's pretty obvious that they, these things were meant to be, you know, you're supposed to grind them out over the course of the season. And, yeah. But that's not how Destiny players work. No. No, no. no. We're going <laughs> to be it now. I want it today. We're yeah. going to grind out that 40 games of Gambit. We're going to grind out those 40 strikes right here and right now. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're a little bit disappointed with that, I, I can definitely, I can definitely understand that these feel a little bit more like participation awards, uh, yeah. than they do, you know, in-game pinnacle grindy weapons, whether Which, or not they're good. You know. I don't know if that's entirely a bad thing either. Like, I don't, I don't either. I don't either. They're, they're unique. The, I mean, I, I, since I don't have any of them, I don't know when I'd use them. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's not bad that but, they exist. Yeah, I think defining them as quote unquote pinnacle in yeah. the way my brain works, and I'm hard. I am a hard person to get approval out of with anything video game related. I'm a hard person to impress. Right. Using the term pinnacle is my only problem with the fact that they are in the game. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna ask Jay this, Jay dude, do you think you're gonna have more people coming to you asking you for Luna's help than you are mountaintop help? Yes, I already see it. A lot of people just oh, come yeah. in and trying to get their still Lunas, and and a lot of the majority is not forgotten. Still, you know, people that didn't right. get it last season still ask about not forgotten. I, I I can safely say I haven't had one person even probably even utter the word mountaintop. <laughs> they're asking <laughs> what is it, <laughs> you know, and as far as like acquiring it, like no people are just like, hey, do you have it? All right, cool. Neither do I. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, not really. I'm with you on the on the word pinnacle. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of probably not the best word. Right. you know to use for it but i mean the, the whole point of the game is is kind of like how tefty tef would say it is the game is a looter shooter before all else mm -hmm. you know and looter shooters there it has to be it has to be grindy you know and say 50 something games where you're not supposed to do them in a day we do that <laughs> yeah but you're not supposed to you're supposed to maybe yeah. do them with your weeklies or when you have a quest and then resume it you know I and mean, they're they're cool weapons they're different i like the fact that they're like a lot different than you know just the normal art type weapons normal fusions autos and uh, and whatnot, but I don't know. At least it's something to go for because the whole point is to keep you playing, like Warframe and right. MMOs, those types of games. Mm -hmm. Destiny kind of fits in that. You're supposed to keep playing. Exactly. You know, so. So Bungie snuck in, and you almost had to like really pay attention to even notice this. Bungie snuck in a quest for the Nightshade. They, they generated did. Nightshade, yeah. Yeah. which is, uh, I believe, it's like thirty bounties you have to turn in. Uh, mm -hmm. Shout out to Say No to Rage, who acquired the weapon. I'm saving all of my bounties for Tuesday because I want yep. powerful gear right away. Um, and the curated roll apparently isn't that good, but it can roll as a random drop through the Vanguard with some pretty powerful, I think Outlaw Rampage is one that a lot of people are talking about. And the Nightshade mm -hmm. was a very good weapon. And this goes all the way back to the beta of Destiny 2. It was one of the weapons that you yeah. got in the beta yeah. to play with. Very good pulse rifle, kind of like forgotten about as we get through like this deep into Destiny 2. And I'm wondering if, so you unlock it by completing the, the quest line, and then it can drop at random rolls through the Vanguard, which is why yes. people are, are curious about mm -hmm. it. The, the role that you get, oddly enough, the role that you get from the actual quest line is supposedly, it's 40, sorry, is, is apparently not that great, is what people are saying. <laughs> yeah. 
So Unlucky. that to me was strange. It was just, I didn't see anything else. I don't know if Gambit. I've only played Gambit twice since yeah. it came out with Polar Bear. I barely paid attention to anything Gambit related. So I don't know if there's something that exists in there other than the Malfi, the Malfeasance, as we, we call it the yeah. Malfi here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Nightshade was really, really about the only other thing. Is there anything I'm forgetting? Um, no, yeah, you're, you're right. They snuck yeah. that in there. And um, I've, I've heard a lot of talk about, you know, that being a pretty competitive pulse rifle, but you just have to finish the quest and then hope you get a decently rolled one from Zavala. And uh, I haven't bothered getting that done. I haven't even tried. Anybody... I think it depends on whether or not it's a uh, kinetic or energy weapon. I know kinetic, that I get it confused with the Nurgle. I think it's the kinetic one is the nightshade, yeah. and the Nurgle is the energy. Yeah, but we're talking about the... displacing and not forgotten or Luna's Hal in terms of PvP. It just, mm -hmm. I mean, Jay, <laughs> yeah. what unseats those weapons in the Crucible? One unseats a not forgotten. Um, the, one, <laughs> the only thing that I ever do because I mostly I still rock like the OG stuff for shotguns. But everybody's like, why don't you have a dust rock blues? Like a botheration always stays in my kinetic. But um, right. the only time I ever really remove my not forgotten is if I'm on a bigger map and I put on the inaugural address outlaw freaking kill clip on a pulse. I honestly believe we are in a pulse meta. Yeah. There's just good mm -hmm. hand cannons. This pulse is just destroy. Go figure with the right roll. roll. Yeah, we'll light you up. You know what I'm saying? I love that thing. And um, and I usually just make those switches. Um, other than that, uh, Polly, just my uh, my snapshot outlaw, uh, fate cries, and then I put like a dire promise in the kinetic slot. I really just like the old the the year one stuff. Even though you can get like Good. Icarus and and put yeah. mods and stuff like that on these weapons, and, and I probably should go out and farm them. But yeah, you got a saying: it's called if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's you right. Say these things are working, so I'm like, I might as well just keep using them. You know, save myself some grinding. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. Inaugural address right now, really strong pulse rifle, mm -hmm. really strong in PvP. I, I would absolutely 100% agree with your assessment there. It's definitely a pulse meta uh, with annoying hand cannons bothering the pulses right now out there in Crucible. You know, <laughs> yeah, stuff competing. like competing, uh, yeah, competing. That, yeah, which is good. We've we've got competition mm -hmm. in Crucible yeah, right now that's, between that's... a couple of different things. That's great, great to mm -hmm. see. Um, so does anybody here actually have any of the pinnacle weapons for this no. season? <laughs> no. Right. So I'm the only no, one. No. I'm the only one. No. Okay, so I've got loaded question. It's not great. Yeah. It's it's not. <laughs> it's um its special ability is reservoir burst, where when the magazine's full, it deals like 33% extra damage and mm -hmm. it causes enemies to explode. That's awesome. Except yeah. it only happens when the magazine's completely full. It's got a seven round magazine, it's a high impact frame, so it reloads slower than like the death of Osiris. It's, okay. it's it's just and its side perks are just really questionable it's um it's got i do believe ionized battery which gives it a higher magazine lowers the reload speed and it's got auto loading holster what you're supposed to okay. do with this weapon is swap to it fire one shot swap away wait three seconds and swap back to it that's the okay. gameplay loop that obviously bungie wants you to do with this but that's not fun it's not fun at all it's, it's super clunky it's, um, it's just, I, I put up a review video on the Planet Destiny channel today, so you can get like full thoughts over there. But it's, it, it, it takes you out of the experience a lot because of how clunky the weapon is. And mm -hmm. I don't understand why they would have given this gun ionized battery to knock its magazine size up to seven. If it had like maybe a magazine size of four, that'd be a bit more, there'd be a bit more utility there, and you'd have the faster reload speed. But, with the way the gun works right now, it's actually pretty good in, in Crucible. That extra 33% mm -hmm. damage makes it so that you can kill in like three bolts. And this gun's got ludicrous range and its recoil direction is like 77. So it's really easy to keep on target on people and land those three bolts. The problem is you're almost never going to get Reservoir Burst in PvP because you start with two shots and it takes like, even if you've got Fusion Scavenger, like two or three drops of uh, special ammo before you'll actually get to activate Reservoir Burst. That's so it's it's kind of a wash in PvP and PvE. It's just frustrating to have to swap away from it or deal with the the long reload time. Most people are just going to deal with the long reload time. And if you of course you can utilize a rally barricade or like a Luna faction rift to circumvent that. And when you do that, you realize that the explosion it's it's strong, it's nice. It's not a huge explosion. It's not like the chromatic fire double firefly effect that's going to that got yeah. patched I think last week, which makes me super sad. But it's like you use it with a. I, I was using it earlier today 
with a Luna Faction Rift, and I'm sitting there like, explosion, boom, explosion, boom, explosion, boom. This is great. This is fun. Why doesn't the gun just work like this normally? Why do I have to rely on a rally barricade for this in order to actually get any sort of utility out of it? Otherwise, it's, it's just not worth it to fire it and have to reload to get that ability back. And without that ability, it's just a worse Arental FR4. Yeah. I, I think the fact that special ammo economy is what it is and the fact that there's oftentimes in PvE you'll find yourself running low, the chances of your clip even being full yep. are going to be seldom. Just the yep. fact of like having that much ammunition. I, I, I've heard through the grapevine, and the community's been talking about it, that there's going to be some form of a change to that weapon because it's so. underperforming. Yeah. But the, the, mm-hmm. out of the three, the, the breakneck seems to be the one to go after. It kind of has a doctrine of passing vibe to it. But the instance of getting it, it to proc rampage times three, by the time you get it at rampage times three, the amount of ammunition you have left in the clip, the time to kill is insane, but you're very so seldomly at that yeah. damage Special. output that it's like... Yeah, cool. I can shred one or two enemies thereafter, but yeah. So I don't know. They, yeah. they, they look they look good. They're different. They're unique. They, I, it's not something that I like. I'm if I'm gonna do it like Dan said. Like if I get it towards the end of the season, I get it. I yeah. don't think it's gonna be going away. Like I don't think it's gonna no, end really with the uh with the season. So even if you know until it becomes a a, a game breaking weapon, I can't be really bothered to grind yeah. it out essentially that goes for all three honestly it, the lunas had so much to it i'm I'm not a good enough player to get a, a not forgotten i play on pc i've got really good friends i'm <laughs> sure i could drag my name <laughs> through the mud with them to get it as the biggest boat anchor in the history but it's like do i want to put myself through that many comp games to get to, to get it especially as the meta changes if i'm am i going to get memed by gigs on PC, if I'm going for it, am I just going to be? Am I just going to be an exploding egg for these guys? Like I, I, I don't know. The Luna's I even had more to it. Like the the Luna's Hell quest was pretty substantial with all yes. that you had to do with the ten games with kills with hand cannons and the super and the super or the solar kills solar and then headshots. Kills, yeah. It was a lot to do, and the weapon felt like it was worth it to me. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree. So I can only imagine what the Not Forgotten feels like. It and. I'm just a fan of the, those weapons. Like the trust is, it was my gun that I used to get yeah. the yeah. Lunas. Just the way that they feel. And I, I don't yeah, know if they're so all good. 180s or whatever they are, but the way their recoil pattern is, it's very manageable. They yeah, barely move. Back. It's yep. not like the straight dupe back. where you're like, Pfft. yeah, and your hand <laughs> falls off. Like it's not like that. You know what I'm saying? So those weapons, even, even the way that they play feels comfortable for me as a player. Um, yeah. But maybe we should talk about Black Armory. Possibly. Oh, is that coming out? You it know what? Be. It's coming out this coming Tuesday, December 4th at 8.30 a.m. PST! Destiny 2 will begin maintenance. And it's... Uh, th- all of Some of the Bungie.net and API features will be taken offline. Please expect chop with Ishtar Commander and Dim. Anything that uses the API <laughs> to change weapons. Probably the first day. At least for a couple of hours, you're not going to be able to swap, swap weapons. Uh, without going back to the tower, uh, keep your consoles up and ready. If you are if you are a console player still, uh, it is it 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 will behoove you to do so. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're on PS4, keep that thing. Oh up and my ready. god, we all know how PS4 updates roll. Oof, yeah. Yes. yeah, yes, yes, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah. There ain't gonna be one thing in this entire house is gonna have internet, but my PlayStation That's right. ain't, gonna be, ain't gonna be like screeching to the finish line. Almost one more gig. Just trying to I'm get packing. to the DLC. Yeah. I'm gonna plug we'll mine directly into the Verizon station, like <laughs> their desk. <laughs> I'm just bringing it right to them. There you go. Take it straight <laughs> to the source. So, who all watched the Vidoc this week? I did, but I didn't understand yeah. a damn thing that was happening. <laughs> they showed a yeah. pistol. Like my eyes said, I wear eight minutes. What the hell was in that man's holster? I was like, that's a gun. You see, he's holding a gun. Oh man. Oh, that wasn't was, ju- that wasn't just a gun, son. Oh, that was not yeah. just a, that was my baby. We going back to the crafty year one strats in D one. That was my last word, baby. Was my it was it your was baby? Old, that was first oh that was my was baby. First curse. Oh, first we curse was all right. First curse. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the first curse existed. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. 
Wouldn't that be a <sighs> oh, that'd be a terrible troll. That'd be the that, that would be a hilarious I, I mean, you, you got the whole community with that one. You oh, got man. all of us. January 29th yeah. rolls around. We start that quest, get to the end of it. I'm ready. Hand it over. First curse. The fuck is Instant this? Fires. <laughs> <laughs> Instant fires. Instant riots. <laughs> Like, the police don't know what people are mad about or what to do because just a bunch of video game nerds are on the street rioting. Burn down the tower, man. Number one trending on Twitter. <laughs> Riots everywhere. <laughs> the city community lost it. Oh, oh man. Yo, oh, man. Ooh. I don't, I don't know. They touched, they touched on a lot of things that I, I can really dig with the annual passes. Like, first of all, we didn't know anything about what was going to happen with an annual pass. Yeah, we like, didn't know anything about Black Armory either. <laughs> No, exactly. <laughs> true. Yeah. It's very true. So, like, from the looks of it, one of the, one of my favorite quotes from the Vidoc comes from Evan Nikolic. Uh, he says, "In game with a campaign, not a campaign with an end game." Right. That's what they've been talking about inside the studio. I don't and get it though. That like, so I, I didn't. I was like, I don't. I don't understand. It's kind of are they the same thing? How are they? No. How are they not the same thing? No, like in game with a camp. A campaign with an end game to me speaks to what Destiny has been since its inception. Like, we have uh, with, about the stranger. Well, no, no, no. I'm talking. I'm talking about like the way that they roll out content outside of like what Forsaken has been so far. Where like you have just one content drop, it drops. It has an end game period. People play that in. Well, we Destiny players are so like ferocious. And and love consuming all that content. I'm nom 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 so fast that like we then go. All right, there's a dry spell. What are you gonna do? Th this to me speaks to like okay. So we're like they're making t content that is time gated. Like it's different things open on different days, such as some of the forges talking, that are coming out. You're talking about the word I can't pronounce forge, which comes out on December 4th. <laughs> the yes. The other word I can't pronounce forge, which comes out on December 7th. And the third word I can't pronounce forge, which comes out on December 18th. <laughs> yes. The Volander forge, the Gofanon, the Gofanon uh, forge. <laughs> he took and a shot at it. Izanami. Leave it alone. Izanami. Now, if I'm mispronouncing any of those, please send <laughs> all of your letters to your <laughs> local senator, he'll love to hear it. Uh, but like, it leads to an interesting like conversation about like w with the way that they've told the story in Forsaken so far. We've had full curse weeks. We have things stretching out over time. We have now with this, it's not necessarily we're not going to get like a full campaign. Most of the story is going to be told through the lore and through some of the weapons that we're going to be getting. But like we're not getting like story missions per se. So through this time gated storytelling, which do you prefer? Do you guys prefer like full release? Like you're able to consume everything all at once or something that is like little piece, little chunk at a time over the course of maybe three months. I want both. <laughs> I want both. Yeah. I, I, if yeah. this doesn't have some form of a story to it, because the yeah. dialogue with forsaken was so good. I'm gonna yes. be a little let down. I'll yes. be I'll be the first to say it if there's not a a campaign of some kind explaining to me why the frig I'm going to the Volunder Forge. Mm -hmm. Like what's uh, there's some shady woman who talks about ancient relics of the past. I'm like, oh cool, dude. You're seeing you're new. I'll do whatever you say. That's right. When that's I'm, when she... I have no stranger danger. I'm a guardian who hasn't showered in five years. I don't have a bathroom, so sure, I'll listen <laughs> to what you say. It's fine. <laughs> When I don't... she shows up in in the Vidoc, though, she sounds like a jilted ex. She sounds like maybe we did her wrong. So I don't know, man. It's I, I'm there's got to be like some form like we're World obviously is going very to good. these rolling content for is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And the, so they talked about the power level is going to be six fifty at launch. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then by the end, so I'm assuming that the, that these forges are going to be increased power level as we go along, including the raid. And it says 750 by the end of the okay. pass. But so by the end of the pass is, is like September. Correct. Each, yeah, yeah, yeah. Each each season, we're going to get a little fifty. You want you want a little bit of bump? You get fifty light levels per on, on for your guardian, regardless of if you buy the annual pass or not. 
Basically, so with that, every like, annual pass release, the light cap is going to be bumped up by 50. So with Black yeah. Armory, we're going to go from 600 to 650. With Joker's Wild in March, we're going to go from 650 to 700. And with Penumbra next summer, we're going from 700 to 750. That's all that, man. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it, for me, that creates like a level playing field for someone if they ha- hadn't purchased the annual pass. Right. Like someone who's, who's sitting back and is like, I'm not buying the annual pass because of X. Someone who f- feels like they've been wronged in the past by, by Bungie or one of the releases. This which points to year one. I'm not buying annual yeah. pass because of that. Exactly. I bought the annual pass at Warmind. I was done. I was like, Bungie got it. They fixed it. They know what they're doing. As soon as they said, yeah. we're fixing the weapon system. And as soon as Warmind had the escalation protocol, Sleeper Simulant came back. The other two exotics that are basically worthless with the with a scout rifle and the, and the <laughs> sword. Um, but as soon as I played Warmind, I was like, I'm in. You're I bought sold. my pass right then and there. I didn't need to be told anything else. Mm-hmm. My, Bungie has my money to mess up. I just don't. I don't see them going backwards. I don't, I don't, I don't see it going backwards. Yeah. So, like, yeah, Dan. Oh, no, go ahead. I was going to say, so when it comes to your question about this story, I think it's pretty obvious that black armory is, isn't going to have story to the, the, the same extent as forsaken. No, <laughs> I think no. they've, they've gone out of their way to state that, um, the, the annual content, the annual pass content, black armory, Joker's wild penumbra is going to be, it's going to be kind of mini content releases. It's not going to be mm-hmm. a big sprawling campaign like forsaken is. And uh, I think they spoke about that before that that just wasn't, that wasn't sustainable. Originally that's what destiny was supposed to have. It was supposed to have like a forsaken, Every couple of months, and uh, yeah. obviously that's unsustainable for them. And so they're they're vying for. This. Of course, there's going to be a campaign in Black Armory. It's just going to drop in the form of, I guess, these forges that we're going to be sent to as story missions or whatever that's going to entail. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, personally, that doesn't bother me as much. I think Forsaken's yeah. been such a turnaround. We got that huge influx of great, great story, great gameplay. Uh, really, kind of turned the way Destiny Two was going around. And these annual pass contents that are going to come out every three or so months, I think th- yeah. I, that's, in my opinion, meant to be that carrot on the stick that's keeping you playing. Like, uh, like, like one said earlier about Tefty, something Tefty always says is, you know, with these looter shooters, you got to keep pumping yeah. in loot. You got to keep pumping in stuff for people to do. And uh, that, that's what I get the feeling these annual passes are for. So I, I don't expect a Forsaken coming on Tuesday. Definitely. <laughs> No, Definitely not. Nobody does. Yeah. I don't think anybody does. And I, that, that's probably one of the reasons for why um, the, the full campaign for Black Armory is being time-gated. You know, we're getting the yeah. first couple of stories, the first Forge, on December 4th. We're getting the next one like a week later, or a, a couple of days later. Three days later. The, it's uh, the same yeah, day as the raid that right, launches. the raid drops. Then we're getting another one on like the 18th, and then that's going to go basically to keep you busy until March of next year. It's their way of yeah. time-gating content and keeping you coming back every week. So, so, Jay, dude, Tuesday yes, rolls sir. around 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. What are you doing? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, man, it's uh, I'm still kind of just honestly learning off of you guys. Like, I didn't even know there was no campaign until yeah. this moment. Well, we don't know. Which, we don't know what's happening yet. Yeah, so, OK, I feel you. But it, like, as far as me, uh, I plan on just, you know, seeing what's new, just grinding what's new. And then, um, and then just getting right back in the crucible. I, I just, I really find a home in the crucible. Yeah. How do you, that, but... how do you, I got to 600 on my first character, my hunter by mm-hmm. doing the broadsword and the Luna's quest, like by accident, like prime engrams drop them while I was playing really? crucible or yeah. exotic engrams dropping. So is that how you, as a, as a PVP main character, is that how you rank up? My uh, console character that I only play PVP on is 561, so he's not going to be participating for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> My PC guys, however, I play because I, I play like the PVE. I kind of do like a little bit more of both on the PC side just because how beautiful the frames look of just the PVE right. and the raids and stuff like that. So they're 600. They're ready to go. So I'll definitely be playing PV uh, or everything with uh, on PC um, first and then see how it goes from there. 561 not even all the crazy amount you've played you still haven't gotten enough prime engrams to to bring that i mean you put hours in how (laughs) bungie help my dude out what for real your boy your boy only got i think three exotics man all for second people playing pvp all the time that's queen's breaker um wave splitter lol and (laughs) actually you know what i think that's it i think i just get old exotics. the only two you need oh man 
Yeah, yeah, you get the quiz in Vegas. Yeah, yeah. All right, we we put off that question long enough, dude. As a comp player, uh, that super spectral blades right on the on the void hunter has been laughable because of hit detection and energy wasted in swipes. Yeah, and now it got a very needed buff. Yes. And I'm seeing clips on Twitter of people in their super for like three minutes, two and a half minutes. That's right. So as intended, as intended. Are, what's that doing for you and what you're trying to accomplish with your teammates? <laughs> I don't want to go to this one. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put it like this. Let's just meet in the middle here. I'm glad Spectral Blades got a buff the class. I'm glad because the hit detection is off. You would swipe forward and you're you would swing back for some reason. Swipe yeah, right. That happens on Arc Strider now. Yeah, yep. it was just Spectral was just kind of weird. So I'm glad it got the buff. Now, as far as that exotic goes in that time, I I don't know if ever, all the Nova Warps and and Blade Barrages are taking a break in in comp. <laughs> Because I am matching spectrals, all having that exotic. And I'm talking about you can, if you are good at what you do, you can keep at this time that super going an entire round of survival. Yep. From start to finish. You pop your super at the beginning, you do what you're doing, you will have it by the end still, if you're smart. Wow. That thing is insane. And, and people who are good with it, they know how to go invis and time it right and catch you off guard when you think, okay, I think we're clear. They, they are running it, and it's a pain. The cool thing is, though, if you have your whole team contested, he doesn't have a lot of armor. He's, yeah, you know, he's, he's like, oh, he can't really block or anything, but the good ones know how you to sneak up on you. It's so all about good. movement with a super like that. It's kind of yeah. like when people say that shotgunners have no skill, I feel like they're discrediting <laughs> movement as a skill and yeah. positioning as right. a skill because, I mean, outside of your, your skating titan with scroll wheel, <laughs> getting into position to win a shotgun battle is a skillful art yes. yeah spectral yeah, blades who are good at what they do have that skill set but so i'm i'm we're about to play a comp game we see four gwis invest spectral blades what are you telling us in terms of how we're going to shut it down oh i messaged you guys telling my internet died rip 100 <laughs> <laughs> oh yikes <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, left the I party. Say, you know, just, I'm just gonna take the suspension. <laughs> uh, uh, what I would do is, um, it really just comes down to making sure. What I've noticed is just kind of because that invis thing makes it blade barrage completely whiffs it. I've never yep. hit them when they're invis. It, it just it just completely whiffs. A couple breaks of my friends assist. have done it, and it's just but it just completely breaks the aim assist, the blade barrage, and stuff like that. Yeah. If we're playing against Spectrals, I literally just say we have to team shot it. If people just say, oh, I'm just going to avoid it like it's a Nova Warp and just run from it, you know, he's he's going to keep catching because all he needs is one. He just yep. needs one. One kill. That's it. As soon as one person gets caught, you have to contest him. You have to call out, talk to each other, and when he comes up at you, you, you got to team him. That's the only thing is teaming. And what uh, subclasses have you been running? Um, I well, My main is an Arc Strider in this game. I really like that mm -hmm. deflect thing. Oh, man, it's Wonderful. so fun to do. Um, but I have uh gone a little bit to the dark side uh with putting on Nova Warp because a lot of the guys I play oh, with uh, my UK all right, I'm out. shout out all I'll my UK always don't hate me, man. <laughs> 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 they uh they mostly rock hunters, and it's always nice to have a Nova Warp just because it's a roving shutdown super, yes. you know. So it's so I usually kind of just bounce between both, but I prefer to play on a on a hunter, especially on console with the you know our highest sensitivity being a ten, which is you know mm -hmm. pretty slow compared to other games. Right. Uh, hopping hunters to me is still the best freaking thing you can have in your arsenal on console, even though you know you got all these great abilities and stuff like that. Just jumping and people, you know, most people rock like four, three to four. They're like trying to you know aim up at you, and you're already above them, shotgun them down, and continue on. That's okay. what makes that's why you see like all my console gang in the chat. So you see so many hunters, despite how good Nova is and all this stuff, because they mm -hmm. just they can just hop and just shot at you, and it's it doesn't. It's the easiest thing to do, I guess. I was I would say you know shy takes no skill. You know I'd just say that it's because I shot it. <laughs> um, it's easier than you know fusion sniping, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's a couple new exotics coming into play with Black Armor. You might end up running into in the Crucible. Dan, mm -hmm. you want to read this list for us? Do it, Dan. So we have the Anarchy Grenade Launcher, which is a Fallen style grenade launcher that that I, I believe it when it attaches like it attaches to an enemy and then causes like an electric freakout fest 
around him. Is that what? Is that correct? I thought I saw a clip where it took three tri- three grenades in a triangle, and they yes. chained lightning in between the three yes. projectiles. Is what I thought I saw. That's it. But yeah. I have glasses. <laughs> That's basically <laughs> it. You're so- <laughs> Shut down, like, process that, that grenade launcher. <laughs> <laughs> My brain cannot process that. Yeah, we I, have, I don't know how that's gonna oh, go work. I, I just don't know how that. I mean, maybe you could set traps, it depends on how long the charges stay on the ground. I guess, yeah, maybe you can yeah, place them from trap places. It needs to be strong. We're talking less about to less than long. long, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that God help us all, <laughs> <laughs> yes. The <laughs> word I can't pronounce, Bo. La Monarch. La Monarch. Monarch. Bo. Thornbow, baby. Thornbow, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, we have we have that coming. We have Izanagi's burden, which is like the body shot dream for all snipers. I don't (laughs) think it is. You're talking so the clip holds four bullets. If you reload it special way, it stacks all four projectiles into one bullet. Right. And that will body shot a guardian in the crucible. Yes. You're yes. talking about all of your ammo. Yes. Yes. To take out one person with a body shot. We talking about final round. You realize what one? this is. It's final round, baby. It's, final round for, <laughs> it's a, three new years, but it's finally back. And there's nothing Aura can do to stop it. <laughs> luck in the chamber also one shot people for a brief time too, right? In Destiny 1, if you had a luck in the chamber sniper. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, I think you could. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're getting the same thing, but like, does that I'm gonna ask Jay. Jay, does that seem worth it to you? We're talking about is it, right, it well, where is, is it? Is it a, is it an energy weapon or a heavy weapon? First of all, energy. I think but it's I don't an know. Energy. I've been told that. Yeah, it's I, it's. So an you're energy. gonna get four bullets to stack in the crucible? That's that's the thing. Like a lot of people, like final round immediately comes to mind, right? Well, it, it really depends on do you need four shots to do that body shot or two? Because you you load in with two, you're gonna have to you know not use that weapon. Yeah. yeah. Get two guardians down, get their special, and then have the ability if you have to get four. Now, if you can knock somebody down with two, then yes, final round is return. But if you yeah. have to get four, personally, I don't see anybody that's really going to use it. Right. Because, like, nobody is going to just, you know, be, you know, all kinetic, you know, get, run over there, get their special, you know, say it twice, hold it, and then go for it. I mean, somebody might do it to make a clip, but personally, like, in, in like a comp playlist, uh, no, that's, that doesn't seem viable to me. Maybe in quick play, you could do it. I was yeah. like, and just play around with it, but I don't, I don't really feel like it's, it's, you know, like a final round unless two shots drop a guardian. To me, yeah. this screams DPS. This is a, this is a PVE DPS yeah, PVE. machine. Could be. Yeah. PVE could be sweet. For those of us I mean, who are, who are sniper, uh, uh less sniper inclined like myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I they, mean, we we had um, uh, Hamrick on the Vidoc talking about it, saying that they, they were trying to figure out ways to make it compete with stuff like Whisper of the Worm. So the damage boost is probably going to be significant. We actually got to mm-hmm. see, um, thanks to some interviews with other websites, what the, the actual perk is called. It's titled Honed Edge, and it reads like this. Holding reload consumes the magazine and loads around with additional range and damage. But the way that that's worded, I'd imagine that the, the range and damage is going to scale based on how many shots you have in your magazine. Yeah, one yeah. shot doesn't do anything. Two, you might get a little bit of extra range and damage. Three, a little bit more. Four, maxed out. Maxed out. And goodbye, all my ammunition. <laughs> goodbye, yeah. all your ammunition. That's true. That better be I... one sexy number that pops <laughs> up. <laughs> like, <Absolutely. laughs> like, for real. All right, what else? Uh, we have the Jotun, which is Man, the... <laughs> the like yeah, it's the Mega Man Fusion Mega Man gun. Yeah. Oh, the Buster gun. The hey. Buster, yeah. <laughs> The thing is so weird. So it's a fusion rifle, but it fires a grenade slug that tracks enemies, and then mm-hmm. when it detonates, it sets the ground on fire, kind of like the Dragon's Breath used to do back in D. That's weird. That sounds crazy awesome. Down with it. It's a that whole sounds, lot of weird. Yeah, that it's sounds a, pretty cool. It's a whole lot I'm, of weird. Can't wait for it. I'm ready to just go. Fuck up! Fuck up! Fuck up! I don't think that's how it works. That's, that's, that's punching. You're punching. I don't right care. Now. That's what I'm going <laughs> to do. <laughs> that's, that's, is it a power weapon for you, do we know? I'm not sure if it's a power weapon not or not. Sure. We got a couple of clips of it within that Vidoc, but um, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know if the HUD was ever up on any of those, or you, you could see where it was uh, sitting. Yeah. I'm it didn't, sure. I, as far as I saw, it didn't show that. Um, um, with the, with the, the Thornbow, the Monarch, you guys know how that works, right? 
Yep. Eat. No. no. Go for it. Oh. <laughs> Tell him. Tell him, right. Tell him, man. I'll, I'll load on him, Kevin. I got it. Um, so the special perk is called Pestilence Arrows. On a perfect draw, a hit target receives damage over time. On a perfect draw with a precision hit, all enemies in the void cloud receive damage over time. So if you fully draw it back and hit an enemy, it just deals you know, damage over time to that enemy. If you get a precision kill on that enemy, that's when it does the AoE cloud and causes uh, the thorn dot to everybody nearby. Pretty interesting way to balance that out, IMO. I am very curious because bows are fun. Desmond mm-hmm. is going to have a cow when he hears me say that. <laughs> but they're not super viable. <laughs> right. True. I did the, the triumph for bow kills in the Crucible, and it was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. But, like, it's a two-tap weapon, essentially. I almost wonder if this turns it into a one. With or, I, you know, who, who... It would have to have an insanely slow draw time for that to mm-hmm. be the case, to give you some form of disadvantage for using it. But, like... I'm really curious. I, and I, DJ, do you ever see a bow in comp? Um, I not really. It's definitely like very <laughs> seldom that I see it. But um, and it's probably I got like a point three seven who uses them. Yeah, like yeah, I have ran into a few guys who know how to use it. If you want to be good with a bow, you have to be the team shot guy. You have to follow right. somebody. Right. They're in a fight. Expect them to have a shot on it, and just put that that second shot into him. Hug that drop butt. Him. And I have played against the guy. I don't remember his name. But that guy was gnarly with that. Like a guy would just tag me and he would shoot me. Done. Because done. there's no hit scan. Mm-hmm. Goes right where you put it. You know, and but, but you know, just like you said, you don't really see it. And most people don't really even know how to use it like that. They just kind of stay yeah. in one spot and just draw it back. And just, all right. So this man peeks this corner, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, we'll see. Something's got to change with those to make them more, more prevalent. So we'll see what happens. I, yeah, I really no. doubt that they would make a one shot bow. I yeah, they made a one shot grenade. That'd be it. We'd all be <laughs> like, oh, we'd all be on it. Like anytime you get a sightline map, I'm on this bow. Yeah. All you gotta do is land one precision hit. That's I, I really couldn't see that happening. Yeah. I mean, if it's thorny, the does that mean dot like damage over time? Like yeah. I would mm. mm. I'm getting yeah, like flashbacks. Hit him in the head and then he burns out if you hit oh, him in the head. Can't stop it. <laughs> like two tap walk away, blink into my <laughs> shot package, <laughs> Fell Winters lie. The only lie about the Fell Winters was the fact they called it a shotgun. You yeah. Smell that. I remember. It smells like year one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like we have that, and then they said the fifth one. Which will be tied to the um, the quest at, right. and January 29th. That's the date. Starting correct? on the 29th. You got to wait a month for this thing. Yes. Uh, it will be. It's got to be the last word. Gotta it has be. to be, right? It has to be the last word. They know that. Oh, their Twitter feed would be yeah. beautiful that day. I would go straight to Twitter <laughs> with some pop. If it was a first card, not last word, I'd be like, All right, All this is about end. to be the best. I dare you, Bungie. Hand me that imprecation. No. We're talking about hand cannons. We've got two very strong ones in Luna's and Not Forgotten. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Trust is a viable weapon. The Duke, if you have the right roll on it, and Crucible will annihilate people. Yeah. What does it unseat? What does it take? What is it? What, what does it remove from your loadout, Jay? The last word, well, I, I'm just talking as if it was a kinetic. Um, you know, it's like, it's a tough one. It, it's a really tough one because it really comes down to how they bring it back. Like, are they going to yeah. bring it back with the hip fire two headshot or are they going to you know make it like you know year three we're all just kind of uh-huh. high rate of fire and you know it's like no you know. range yeah so it's like i i'm like really excited for it because i love the last word and i always used it next to thorn but i'm really scared that it's just going to be a 180 with a sexy animation to it yeah <sighs> Because it's like, I feel like we're all expecting it to be good and viable, at least above average. So we yeah. can use it, have fun with it. If it comes back and it's trash, it's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a very sad day for everybody who loved that gun and just remembers that gun and how much damage and how known it was. Yeah. Bungie has yeah. to bring it back and bring it back with, with some heat. You know, because other than that, like you said, the question, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't really know. Um, but if the last word does come back and in full glory, then 
Last word sniper. That's it. I'm not putting on a shoddy again. That's it. Let me ask you this. Would you consider if it goes in the kinetic spot, a last word, not forgotten loadout. If it had two tap headshot from the hip and it meant that you would be able to shut down a shoddy warrior with the just last word it. and not forgotten See, for range. Or I keep just keep talking to me, bro. Just keep saying <laughs> right? like, think that about sounds it. Awesome. slower. That sounds like a, an awesome setup. You got your not forgotten for your engagers, got your range. Somebody tries to ape you, you flip out the last word. Da, da, da. Bop, bop. That That's would be it. sweet. I would love that. I would 100 percent do that if that was a thing. Absolutely. I, I've I don't want it to come back with the range that it had in D1. Be mad at me, chat. I just <laughs> I am. You can, I'll, I'll live, I am I'll live mad with at it. You. Be, be mad at me. I, I, <laughs> I want it to function as it was intended to function, and I feel like a two tap from the hip as a headshot is a hard thing to do against somebody who is flat out yeah. flying at you with a shotgun. That Dang. to me is is a little bit higher skill than maybe laning with the last word. So, I th- my brain the way I see it coming into Destiny Two, I see it being a sidearm. That shreds way faster than a sidearm would shred. Two tap to the head, done. Mail it in fear within that range. It doesn't have to be like, I'm not talking like on top of you. We're talking like maybe 15 meters, two tap range from there. I could see that. That would, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I mean, you know, first off, how dare you refer to the last word <laughs> as a sidearm? <laughs> yes. Never again. <laughs> Never again. Don't you ever call my beautiful last word a sidearm? I didn't have the connection to it that everybody did in year one. I wasn't like in. I mean, I was a. I was a thorn, blink, Ooh. shoddy dude. Like that was that. I was two tap and walk away. So I. I never grew attached to that weapon the way that a lot of people did. In fact, I didn't even. I didn't know how to use it properly until basically like year two, year three. I actually tried to do too much with it. It's a weapon that you kind of like don't overcomplicate. And I, that was yeah. me. I was I was trying everything I could to make that weapon viable. And the less I tried to do with it, the more it worked for me. It wasn't until I figured that out. So yep. I think that's why I feel the way I feel about it. Yeah, you know, right. you, that's that's not surprising at all. There's still a ton of people who don't realize the last word was full auto. You know? Yeah. Uh, that yeah. is so true, too. A lot of people so never true. knew that, that you could just sit there, hold the trigger. It'll fire on its own. That's the way you're supposed to use it, you know, just up close. <laughs> Um, I think I found yeah. that out a year too. I was always yeah. tapping it. Yeah, well, guys, like, have you ever tried holding it? It started fire. I was like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> Mind blown. It's, yeah. uh, <laughs> but when it comes to the last word, that was my baby. That was one of my babies in year one. Um, I didn't get Hawk Moon until the end of like House of Wolves. Uh, but you know, I got Thorn like the second week of Destiny. That was my first exotic. So I love my Thorn, but I got my last word pretty early on in Destiny One, and um, I loved it. I love that thing. So I'm super excited to see it return here with Black Armory. But <laughs> you ask about what, what, what you'd like to see with it. That's a question of whether or not we get year one last word or yeah. everything else last word. Like, uh, like one said, if we're going to be getting the year three last word that barely worked even inside of its range. If we're getting something close to year one last word, which I wouldn't really put it past Bungie. You take a look at something like the Queen Breaker. The Queen Breaker was basically lifted stat for stat from D1 and dropped in D2 with all of the cheesy head aim assist that it had way back in year one of Destiny 1. Um, for them to do something like that with the last word, I, I hope it's something closer to year one than everything else. Maybe not the, you know, ADS 111s. That, uh, that, that probably don't need to happen with the last word. But, um, oh man, I hope it's coming back. It looks like it's coming back. And I hope it's coming back closer to what it was in year one rather than year three. Because it just, that was such a great weapon to burn people down in close range. And you sit there and hip fire, unload on them. It was, there was, there was nothing in my opinion that felt as good as that. You had that. Fun to use, fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that fell winner's lie. Titan comes blasting around the corner. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I just dropped. <laughs> <laughs> never got old. One of the one things feeling. never got old. Yeah, I love that gun. I love I'm it. never going into Crucible again. <laughs> 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 oh, it's gonna be good. Oh man, we have uh, coming up coming up with it another title added to uh, our our characters, possibly the blacksmith title, right. which is tied to the forge because you will be forging these weapons. 
possible. I don't know about the exotic weapons. I don't know about the exotic weapons. Let's not say that in case I'm wrong. I'm probably wrong. But we're going to be forging weapons at each of these forges. And you're good. Like you, you build them as you're completing the horde mode. Yeah. Down the line, which is super. That's cool. awesome. I, That's yes, cool. I, I, I love that idea. I like the idea of the blacksmith title. Cause unfortunately we're not getting the shader. <laughs> and uh <laughs> we uh rest in peace rest in peace but uh <laughs> no i i really like the idea of this of this infinite horde mode idea yes where you can just forge weapons as you're going it makes me wonder if you have to go there it's there it feels like each little thing is tied in with a theme that they're going for and like this this season's theme is matchmaking they're hmm. doing a little experiment with how matchmaking. Right, right. And so you mean that like we, if you're 4500 glory you'll match 4500 glory people and not like Tim who just turned on the game yesterday? No, you're going to get Timmy no thumbs. That's who you're going to yeah. get. Yeah. <laughs> but with the like uh with the forges, my like it's they made it sound like maybe it was like an iteration on the haunted forest. Yes. Like what we saw with that only with more of a horde mode involved with it, like uh, a true horde mode rather than one that lasted till the <laughs> clock wound down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're right with the, the forges we've got how many of them? Five forges coming Four. we've got the Volander Gofanon or Govanon. I think it's pronounced. Uh, yeah. And Niobe, maybe like one more, or maybe it's just, three. well, oh, is oh, Niobe a forge? I don't even I know. Think, what is it a dungeon? So. It's called Niobe Labs. I know it's dropping like in January, and it looks like it's a forge. Okay, might, be, might not be, but um, we do know that with this is matchmaking. We're finally getting matchmaking in a in a horde mode here in Destiny, which is something that the player base has been asking for for a long time. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to bring up the notion of the haunted forest, I absolutely do agree that the haunted forest was probably the testing ground for the matchmaking that we're getting with the um, with the lost forge activity that's going to be dropping with Black Armory. And I'm so gr I'm so happy for that because I thought I thought the matchmaking for haunted forest was great. I love that there was a solo option where you could just go yeah. in there by yourself if you wanted to, or a matchmaking option. I think that's something that should be added to like all the strikes, all the yeah. the, the match made content within the game right now. That's just um, it's yeah. just, just a cool system, and I'm glad we're finally getting it with Black Armory. Yeah, I, I I'm Good. does uh, that's what I was wondering. Does that mean that we'll possibly be able to go in solo for this horde mode? Because I, I can see that being a huge fine. PVE boon. That'd be cool, yeah. man. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. really cool to watch on Twitch and everything. Even yeah. if you couldn't, you're gonna see you're gonna people see trying. people <laughs> going in with a team of three and two people not doing anything. <laughs> You'll see two people end up screen. finding it. like almost like uh, when people used to do one v three trials they yeah. would fly yeah. in with three with two teammates then the other two teammates would just dip you, you'll find it you'll people guardians will find a way especially with the way that the directory and the content creation is gone right now mm -hmm. with all these solo challenges going on and, and and raid challenges they'll find a way to make something like that happen whether bungie provided it or not i have full right. faith yeah. in people like glad and, and the redeem yeah. guys and the be bold guys they'll they'll figure out a way they'll yeah. they'll manipulate devious might even find a way to to get into the forge without getting into the forge and soloing the whole thing the way he <laughs> probably <framed. laughs> yeah it's, it's like that with that dude but we'll see horde mode's good horde mode is wanted jay if, if horde mode is a thing and and it starts people start asking about it are you going to leave the crucible and do forge carries um i will always uh yeah be a crucible main just that's what expected that's what people you said you know, no kind of chat get your but, get not your... necessarily no <laughs> but here's the thing with horde man I come from I've come from playing a lot of Gears of Wars uh, horde mode. I want it to be you say infinite rounds and stuff. I want it to just be like that. You load in, it gets harder and harder until I either say I'm done or I get slapped and can't contain it. I want that kind of horde mode. If they give give me another thing like EP where it's just a certain amount of rounds and then congratulations, you won and you didn't get the shotty again. <laughs> Then I probably won't be playing it too much. I'll just probably get like some cool weapons. If somebody says, "Hey, yo, this weapon's actually lit, man, you gotta try it," then I'll probably obtain it and probably won't see it mm -hmm. too much. But I want, I want that. And you could do so much. It'd be so beautiful if it was just constructed like that because of the supers we have. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're like mm -hmm. supers. Like it starts off maybe just a bunch of running thrall at you, and next thing you know, it's like ogres everywhere, and it could be so cool as as a content creator to do and to show off and and just participate in it. It would be a great time. If it's like that, oh, absolutely, I'll do it. The uh, only but, um, 
The only horde mode I ever played in in my entire life was in a game called Rise Son of Rome. I don't know if anybody knows of this this game <laughs> yeah. before. But the online it before. for Rise Son of Rome was basically a horde mode. And as you played the horde mode, you die immediately as time goes on. You start to lose your health to the point mm -hmm. where the stacks against you are you're basically dead right away. And I still managed to like, like you, if you didn't kill somebody, you died. I managed to go for like three hours. For two hours, I was literally, <laughs> if I didn't kill someone immediately, I was dead. I was that addicted to it. I forget who my teammate was. Some random dude, uh, some random match made guy. It took us like 45 minutes to find a, ga a game together. And all we, like um, for two hours straight, we were one. We were basically dead. It was wild. So if it brings something like that, yes, yeah, I'm, cool. I'm in, dude. Dope, and you'll find me yeah. doing that for, yeah. for three hours. hours. Like I'll get lost <laughs> in that shit. That sounds dope. Yeah, I actually never knew that. It's called Rise. Rise, Rise son, of son of Rome. R Y S E, son of Rome. It's a. Uh, it's a like a third person. You're a Roman fighter, sword based combat. It was a dude. It was done by CryEngine. I never heard anything else from them as a company. It was one of the most mind blowing games I've ever played in my entire life. It was so good. Almost nobody even knows about it. Um, but I really yeah. enjoyed it in the horde mode in that game. I don't even know if you'd have to. I don't even know if you could play with your friends. It was such an archaic. And this was on like the Xbox One. Yeah. It was so archaic. Like I don't even know if you could play with your friends on it for for PV for for online uh, PVE experience. It was wild, dude. But that horde mode was legit. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm just really excited for like a true horde mode to come to the game. And, um, yeah, and I, I love it's... the connotations there of us becoming blacksmiths and forging our own guns and the kind of stuff that's going to go along with that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and of course, based on how these activities work, we know they're going to be replayable. And uh, if this is like the way you get different randomly rolled versions of the black armory guns, down, I'm down with that. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that, especially that's a lot, like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. And, and mm -hmm. I'm assuming that each of the forges maybe won't have its own unique loot pool, but hopefully there's going to be a few things that you can only get from certain forges. Because, yeah, you know, the story for Black Armory is that like this is a, its own faction that's separated into three different families, like a Japanese family, yeah. a French family and like a Norse family or something like that. And they all have their own different styles of weapons. And I would love to see them expand upon that with the types of guns that we'll be creating within these forges uh, come Black Armory. <clears throat> cool. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, we got on to see December a raid, didn't we? Say so what? We got to see a raid, didn't we? Uh huh. Uh, so on December seventh at nine a.m. PST, mark your calendars to watch those world first runs. Yeah. Uh, the raid will be dropping. Uh, I believe what is it called? It's uh, Scourge, Scourge of the of Past. The past. Yeah. Does that mean um, we're gonna fight Scourge? Because that would be <laughs> badass. <laughs> Scourge raid would be really, really good. I take it. Yeah. I'm like it. It's launching when the way that they describe it is that it has Wrath of the Machine feels, and it's highly influenced by that, especially with it being set uh, in the last. With it being set in the last city. With it being in. That's cool. It's set kind of in the EDZ. I, I, I just really want to see what happens there. Because what happens? You like the raid, like the movie, the raid happens. We just <laughs> fight your way up a skyscraper. That's what it looks like. We get to see one big building that we know we'll be fighting our way through. And um, yeah, it, that, that looks pretty cool. When they said that, that it's more inspired by like Wrath of the Machine, I think specifically they're talking about it being more combat focused. Uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, the the Last Wish raid is a lot of big puzzles to solve and stuff like mm -hmm. that. The mechanics, yeah. Yeah. Freaking Breath. vault. I still don't understand the damn vault, dude. <laughs> Just Neither tell me do I. Just tell, me where, yeah. tell me where to drop I'm this the, orb. <laughs> I'm the last guy. I'm always at Temple, and I'm like, just tell me where to slam, please. Just show me the thing, and, and I'll it's, be there. It's it's crazy because Last Wish is great, but like I can think back. I loved Wrath of the Machine back in D1. Because a lot of those encounters were just a straight up fight. They, yeah, they, 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 what was the priest's name? That son of a 
Dude, he was the hard. He was the raid boss. Kevix, Kavix, Skivix, something like that. He had something to run into the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the shed or whatever. He had to dive into the garage to stay alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had into the garage door. Oh, yeah, and Kevix tried to slide, like hitting it, like no. Oh, <laughs> I'm sliding, no, I'm sliding. Get, get in here. You make it in. We still died. What happened? No, nobody yeah. shot the door. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boxes, oh, thank that. you, Rock. We both said, yeah, there we go. Boxes. Oh man, that dude on heroic, man. That might have been one of the one of the most difficult raid bosses ever. It was yeah. that was an unforgiving yeah. fight. Yeah, he was. And if we're getting into more unforgiving fights, dude, bring it on. Yes. Yeah. Difficulty's good, Bungie. It's good. I love it. Wrath of the Machine was like a, a high octane ride, and it's looking like that's what um Scourge of the Past is gonna be too. So mm -hmm. I'm down with that. Yeah. It ain't Wrath of the Machine until I ride a tank again. Man, you know what I'm saying? Get it. Oh, give me a tank. There's gonna be some sort of sparrow part of it if the uh, the trailer for it is uh is is not, you know, lying to us. Right. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we'll have some sort of vehicle nonsense going on in there. Good I stuff. hope I can say empowered left. Oh yeah. I don't want that to be a thing. Empowered again. right. <laughs> Monitors! Shoot the monitors! <laughs> Alright, who didn't shoot their monitor? Left side. Right. <laughs> that was it. There's so much that went on in that, in that raid. Yeah. So much conversation. It was such a talky raid. Yeah. yeah, it was very... Yeah, you had to communicate that one. Yeah. They, like, I, I like the idea behind this, too, that it's a straight-up raid. Entirely just a raid. It's not a raid lair. It doesn't tell a story set in the dreaming city it's something that's outside of it that yeah. maybe gives you a break if you've been just grinding there the entire time like 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 uj uh, <laughs> but like it's it's one of those things where it, any any story that we can get to fill out the world especially of the last city we i we do we know the location of the last city even i think there's no. speculation about where it's located within right. the world but i don't think it's ever been confirmed right a anything in the last city to help propel the story of the last city with us going in to protect it. Totally down for That's They cool. said that it's, it's bigger than a raid layer, but smaller than last wish. So if you were dissatisfied with eater of worlds uh, or spire of stars, I actually thought it was pretty, I mean, only cause I did it once, but I thought spire of stars was a pretty beefy raid, it's but they're saying beefy. that it's, it's, uh, it's bigger than either one of those layers yet smaller than Riven. So I think the player base is going to be pretty satisfied with the raid team was pretty hyped about it. Um, yeah. coming forward so that that makes me excited and shout out to the raid team man they yeah. they they nail it it's because like didn't they their first like the raid team we have right now wasn't their first raid that they gave us a spire like they did spire, um, and then they did last wish and they were doing this next i think one. that was vicarious like, visions first raid yeah yeah that okay, was, that was like, yeah. Okay. well the, i'm talking about the raids have always been, yeah. I, I love them all i think they're all yeah. fantastic so i'm just you already know they're going to knock it out of the park. Just like the art team. They always knock yeah. it out of the park. Yeah. So I yeah. expect the raid team to... Art and the music team, it. no matter what yeah. happens, always it. phenomenal stuff. I agree. Dreaming City is the absolute greatest world space that Destiny, Beautiful. Destiny has yes. had yet. Like, I, I think I, the Ascendant Realm is, man. The more I spend time in that Shattered Throne, the more I'm like with the lightning going cool. on in the background and yeah. the lights going on. Yeah. I'm like... The, the, like, the way that you go into the Slow Realm... Like you kind of merge through like a liquid door. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Art direction in Destiny is is absolutely on point. There's there's nobody can fault Bungie when it comes to art direction and music and that kind of stuff. This game's gorgeous. Yeah. And I think there's all rays. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I think we're getting. Well, I don't. I don't want to put it out there if it's not confirmed, but we might be getting another dungeon with Black Armory. Yeah. In fact, that might be I what think... Niobe Labs is. I think that's what it is because it doesn't say forge. Right. Like right. they've, I believe they mentioned in a recent interview that there were, that there po possibly would be multiple dungeons. Let me see if I can find. So if it's a dungeon, it would be in correlation with the curse that's going on in the dreaming city, right? This would be separate in my opinion. Possibly. Unless it's in a completely different location. I think it's in, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be on earth. Cause all these forges okay. are on earth as I recall, aren't they? Uh, Nessus yeah. has well, the, currently the ones you can get in game to get some of the weapons ahead of time. I believe there's a forge. Oh, I didn't right. go after anything, but there I believe there's one, one on Nessus, Nessus as well. I, yeah, I, there is. It looks from the looks of what we saw in the Viadoc and what we have some of the like itty bitty pictures from the uh, Road Forward. It looks like you're going to have Nessus, EDZ, and IO. Okay, like just from sense. the styling. 
let me see if I can pop that up here. Um, that's that link right there. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures of it right now. You're you're absolutely right. Definitely, definitely Nessus yeah. and Io in there. So it, it seems like they've they've listened to they listened to us when we were like, we want more stuff to happen on other other planets outside of Mars. We want <laughs> Hordish, hordish activities to happen somewhere else outside of Mars. It would be really cool if we could do this just about everywhere. And this is an answer for that. Yeah, you know, but there's got to be a lot of different bits of content for us to uh, to engage with when Black Armory yeah. goes live on Tuesday. I'm psyched for it. I'm actually really excited. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been collecting lore like crazy, and uh, I I just want to see what like what new bits we get because there's still a book that is completely question marked out so I, I i don't know i'm excited good stuff in there all right was there anything else from the the news for this week that we needed to uh we need to cover the dawning event slated for december 11th right. crimson doubles is confirmed for next year coming along with the dawning mm-hmm. uh, right we'll see what that brings the dawning is when it's all like holiday themed in yeah. the tower right was throw probably, snowballs yeah. at your friends i, I, I hope they leave nice. the snowballs away because i hurt myself with them more than i hurt anybody else <laughs> uh, yeah slowing yourself yeah yeah that that's that prep more than anything else and uh veteran rewards as promised in october those who played destiny 2 forsaken before october 6th or 16th will receive veterans of the hunt rewards mm-hmm. i'm not exactly sure shader shaders emblems you get like a prize pack of the little uh, disposable or not disposables, but the um, like masterwork. Yeah, yeah, the consumables to get masterworks, uh, like fire team medallions, things right. of those nature. And then uh, you also get two exotic emotes. One of this, one of them is flip of the coin, so you get to become your own your own uh, drifter. drifter. And then the other one is knife flip, so you can just flip it around. It's gonna be kind of red. It's basically like the shader looks like what you got at the end of year one if you completed the the triumph right. the the triumphs of year one in uh, Destiny one. Um, That's going back. I don't remember that. Real quick, going just a tad bit backwards. Also, mm-hmm. it comes with the good old, you know, crimson devils and the snow and everything around the tower is the ability to go into third person. I don't know if you guys yeah. ever seen that happen. You can run around in third person. Some yeah. Like form caller thing. <laughs> I mean, I'm oh, that. That's a little thing, but it's the little things in life sometimes. <laughs> I kind of wish this game had a third person mode. You could just toggle it on. That'd be good. I like yeah. it. I think yeah. it would be really good in third person. <laughs> but so. You and, uh, you and Lily are going to be doing some Crimson Doubles, Jay? Yes. Yes. Me and her will be going at each other's throats in some Crimson Doubles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking team shot. When you yeah, all the way on the other side of the map camping. Who are you calling a camp, bro? It's going to be great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, that's how you solidify the marriage. Bond, that's right. You know it's a saying? strong relationship. <laughs> Babe, I see you in chat. Please don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, right on. Is it, if, if that's all the biggest news bits that are coming from this week, we do have a, a huge you know, content release coming this week. Black Armory is dropping on Tuesday. I hope you Guardians are ready for it. But that's all it all. Oh, it's ready. I'm, I'm ready to dive on into it and uh, see what uh, see what new stuff I can get my hands on. It'll be nice to finally get a legendary machine gun. That's that's kind of the first yes. thing I want to go after. And, machine guns are awesome. Yeah, oh, I love them. I love the Thunderlord. Can't wait to get more of those things. You guys think it's time to move on to questions? I believe so. Just with a little ending thing there, uh, as far as the DLC, Bungie, all you need to do. Is just give people a reason to continue keep playing your game. Mm-hmm. Just give us a reason to grind. We want to grind. That's why we play this game. We want to grind first and foremost. Your PVE and everything is good. Your PvP you're getting there. You know what I'm saying? As long as they just give us with these time gated things, like Aura was saying, as long as they just you know keep put them at a reasonable time and and keep it going, giving us stuff to do, it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be a good time, and I'm, I'm honestly very excited to honestly play the PVE. I'm very excited yeah. for it as a PvP main player. That's it, man. Right on. Um, just, just, just to build on that for a little bit. First things first. This is the part of the show chat where you guys get to ask questions live. Ask our guest questions. That's right. Send all of them. I want to see all the man. questions go into one. <laughs> but um, to the note there of of giving people a reason to play the game. That's something that uh, 
that's something that I think Bungie has shown that they've learned. I think they've learned that lesson with Forsaken. I think um, Forsaken has been jam packed with content that's been worth you know the login for the most part. And mm-hmm. I think that's what they're doing here with the the annual pass because we got, of course, that that roadmap this week too. We got that huge roadmap that showed basically everything that was going to be dropping as part of Black Armory moving into you know Joker <coughs> Wild and Penumbra. And it looks like they're trying to do that. They're trying to make it so that this DLC, not all of the content's going to be dropped on the first day. They're going to be trying to drop things, you know, in subsequent days and weeks to keep you coming back to do something new within the game. And um, it really looks like they're trying to figure out a way to get these, these content releases to last exactly three months. So that, you know, by the time you get everything that you need to get out of Black Armory, you're like three weeks away from Joker's Wild dropping. And, um... As long as it's a sustainable option for them there at Bungie, you know, to continue developing like this, I think this is a pretty good, it's a pretty good strategy moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, we have a couple questions here, and then we can we can round out our night. Um, Cosmic Irony asks, "What do you think about how the Penumbra and Antumbra, Antumbra buffs relate to the Penumbra DLC?" With like how do how do you feel <laughs> that they will re- relate? The only thing that we know so far is what we've been told by Chris Barrett, right? Where right. he said in the Vidoc that they're leaving Penumbra kind of. They don't want to tell us too much about it because it seems like, the, based on what they were hearing, they saw people really responding to Whisper of the Worm Quest, right. to to things along those lines. That they wanted to make an entire season based around that. So I don't know what we're going to see with that. Uh, as long as it's like surprising content. Have we even found the 15th, like last no, wish, Kurt? People are like, still looking. Wish yet? Yeah, we're still looking for that. So if it's something along those lines, holy cow. That's <laughs> that's the last <laughs> few months. But I don't think it's done yet. I don't think, no. I think they're still in development for it. So I'm not sure. I don't know enough about it. I, the only thing that I know about Pen- Penumbra and Antumbra is what I see in the raid at the vault. I don't, vault. I don't see it anywhere else in the game. Yeah, I'm not all that perceptive, but I don't, I don't know what it's going to have in terms of the future for the game. We're talking about summer. I'm just trying to get yeah. to Tuesday right now. You <laughs> yeah. know, yeah, exactly. I'm trying I to stay patient. That far ahead. Um, Loganator asks, "When actual will you marry me?" Um. <sighs> Hey, when you remember that picture you showed me with your, with your skin that sunburn, bro, you get that cleaned up. <laughs> it's man, I don't think you thought I was gonna put it in there, but Logan, we'll put you on the spot, my dude. We'll we'll ask the questions you put them in chat. Yo, you yeah. nasty anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it, man. Bring it on. Uh Loganator also asks, uh, what's everyone's thoughts on trials being pushed back for so long? Jay, you start with this one, my dude. At adding more and more pressure, more and more pressure for when it does come back. If it does to be, it better be good because it's like, okay, it goes like this. The more and more they push it back, the more and more we're missing it. We're like, okay, whatever they're doing to it, you know, it, they got to have a good, good idea or come back with fire and stuff like that. So it's putting just more and more pressure on them. We still miss it. PvP players still want it. Our little, you know, Friday through, you know, reset weekend tourneys we call it trials the car was is phenomenal one of the most exciting things to do in destiny you know in destiny one and destiny two and destiny one you know it, it literally carried the directory it the did. directory like during the week would have about seven eight thousand viewers during the week and the weekend two thousand with crafty and all these guys coming out of the world work to play trials with followers and subs and stuff like that and it was always fun and the new version of, of trials doesn't doesn't touch it the area is cool Going down and seeing that big chick for the first time scared the crap out of me. <laughs> but literally, like, honestly, Elim, 3v3. Mm-hmm. Heck, I'll meet you in the middle Simple with 4v4 four, four as long as it's Elim. But just give us the OG trials that we loved. I, like I said in the beginning, I have a saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This mic ain't broken, so I don't need to fix it. I can use it. My phone ain't broken, it ain't you know, so I can use it, right? Trials is not a broken thing. You know what I'm saying? Bringing it back was one of the most exciting things when we saw it in D2. We're like, oh, Trials of D2 is going to be cool. Even with PvP, the way it was. Right. We were still excited for Trials to come down the pipe. So I don't know what they're doing. I really hope they're not overthinking it and just going to throw us something. And next thing you know, Trials is breakthrough or something. 
only. Yeah. You know, just <laughs> literally, just give us that. I, I'm pretty sure Bungie put out a tweet right now and said, would you want us to revert it back or keep working on it the way we would? 90% would say bring it back the original way. I was talking about at least 90. I want to say higher than that would want that. The only people that probably wouldn't is people that you know, didn't play it in D1, so they have no it. idea what to compare it to. Yeah, for me, there's there's two different sides to the coin for trials. There's the game itself, and there's the loot pool. And yeah. I don't think you can bring one back, even if it's resolved, without the other being hand in hand. Th there needs to be some form, and I might even go as far as to say some form of a pinnacle weapon tied to it. Yes. There needs mm -hmm. to be something that is yes. worth the game mode because there's more options than there ever has been for players. Period. Even if you're a crucible fanatic, you've still got especially with the dawning coming out, you've got all these other different things you can be involved in. Comp wasn't there when Trials was out in Destiny 1. So what are you going to do to pull the player pool from there and insert them into Trials? And are people going to... Do you go as far as to remove Comp from the playlist on the weekends that Trials is active? Because what's matching going to be like? How are you going to build a matchmaking system? Is it going to go off of wins? Are you going to bring boons back? Yeah. And for the love of God... Give us something that is worth it. I mean, it is fun. Don't get me wrong. It is yeah. fun. But just as Jay said in the beginning, it's a looter shooter. Bro, yeah. got to have the loot yes, behind it. That's something you so, try for. Yeah. That's just how I feel about Trials. And I'm okay with them pushing it off because there is because there is comp and there is Not Forgotten and there is Luna's Hell. And for, to some degree, there's Mountaintop. But there's <laughs> there's other things for people to, to fight for. So, Yeah. No, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, I hope Trials comes back soon. Maybe they'll surprise us and drop it before we, uh, before we actually realize it. But um, <laughs> yeah. it's so weird because a lot of people, I think, underestimate the effect that Trials had on Destiny 1. Trials yeah. carried this game. It carried Absolutely. this game after the Taken King came out and we got into that, that huge content drought. The reason Destiny stayed alive on Twitch was Trials. Facts. Far enough. YouTube as trials. well. It was YouTube, YouTube, YouTube well. two clips and ga yeah. games and streamers versus that. streamers. It was yeah. There was yeah. and and I still don't understand to this day. There was no real reason to change up trials the way they did. There was no reason to reinvent the wheel there. And um, I would I would be perfectly fine. Like one said, I'd be perfectly fine if they brought it back just like it was in Destiny One, just three v three limb. I think that would yeah. um, I think that would work perfectly fine with the weapon system and the 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 PVP environment we have in Destiny 2 right now. And it's definitely something that's sorely missing for players. Uh, you know, the, the, the Lunas and uh, Not Forgotten grind on weekends is pretty good, but I think a lot of people want their trials back. And um, Yeah. I yeah. hope it comes back. I hope it's got a lot of unique, worthwhile rewards. And uh, it's about time that, uh, <laughs> one, you said your character on PS4 is like in the 560s because all you do is play PvP. Maybe it's yes, about sir. time that they, they, they revamped some of those PvP rewards and gave us some after-game drops that were, you know, at power level. Mm -hmm. and, yes, please. <laughs> don't know why that changed from D1 to D2. No clue. My, my dude will be grinding if, if Trials is coming out two weeks from now and power level was enabled. Jade be out there yeah. farming public events on uh, Titan, yeah. just like I mean. the rest of us, <laughs> you know? I would definitely be in that for a dollar for a light level a day. You can save one actual light level. One prime angry goes a long way. Yeah. Take a um, throw my bone. So, with that, so D Joel asks, "What are your thoughts on a Destiny Pro scene potential?" I like that's something that has been around since the beginning of Destiny Two. People asking that question, like, hey, where does it fit? Like. Sweat sweat rules are way different than like the rule set that Destiny that Destiny Two has. There's entire weapon types that they don't see as valid. Yep. Like mm. including the grenade launchers. Correct. Put that down. <laughs> yeah. <There's, laughs> and there can't be a pro scene the way the game's currently set up. Yep. With yeah, people a, yeah. snatching IP address and DDoS. It just happened this weekend. Yeah. There was yeah. a tournament that was going on and people got DQ'd because they were grabbing IPs and DDoSing people. The way the game is currently set up, there. You'd need yeah. dedicated servers, or yeah. it would have to be a local, like a LAN type. Yeah. And as big as this game is, I don't know if I could get 40 people in the Philadelphia area together to do a Destiny tournament in a building yeah. on the same platform. Like, it's cool to talk about. It's cool for clout, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't see it being a legitimate tournament actual champion yeah. kind of setup until a yeah, lot of these. And it, but honestly, I don't think they'll ever get corrected. Maybe Destiny yeah. 3, maybe. 
I I personally think that any PvP pro scene right now, you're not going to see it in Destiny 2. Like, maybe Destiny 3. I personally think that some of the most compelling like games for me to watch are actually Gambit right now. Yeah, Gambit's sweaty. <laughs> yeah, Gambit gets real sweaty. Um, Guardian Con this year, they had it up on like they had it up on the the huge screens. Everybody was sitting there watching it. Then again, you had to wait like six hours in line to play it, so a lot of people decided to watch it. But it's to me that's some of the most compelling. Learning the strats to burn quick, using using the game to fit your advantage of like having some PvP in there. Like everybody, there's ample places to find out where the uh, where the spawn points are. There's ample pl- like you have PvP and PVE integrated together. I I feel like that's the best of both worlds for this game and probably right now the signature game mode for Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as like a professional scene, like you guys say, I I don't see it personally. Uh, I don't really see it in this game. If they were gonna try to do some professional fibbing, I think as far as PvP goes, D one would have been a lot would have been the place to do it. Um, because that was just a lot more, just a lot faster, a lot more intense. Everything yeah. seemed a little bit more, you know, just better and more appealing. I I don't think personally they could uh pull it off just just to sh- you know, in this game. I think yeah, just like you said, we have to wait till. Destiny 3, hopefully it's not 30 frames on console. But you can <laughs> see this. I will say this. Whenever these tournament tourneys come out, people watch them. Yeah. People want it. People want the pro scene and they want to see competitive. They want to see these tourneys and these sweats, these GBs with you know with money on the line. People want it. You saw it. those that with that director. I was like, dang, man. You know, I was like, this is freaking, I was tuning into it. Yep. Even the you know, charity so, event that Parker on Twitch did out in LA yeah. uh, or Vegas or wherever, I, I don't recall specifically, like even that had a ton of viewership on Twitch uh, for the charity event and they yeah. flew players out. That was actually an in-person on LAN, you know, player uh, team versus team sitting next to each other in the building. That's cool. Probably about that? the only way you could do it right now as the game sits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just hopefully we can get it one day, but yeah, I don't see it in Destiny 2. Destiny 3, you yeah. know. Cross your fingers. Yeah. Hope for it. Um, we have two more questions here. Okay. First one, Nick underscore Logan. Do you think Zur is going to be relevant again? Or still not until next season? He's relevant for me right now. I didn't play <laughs> Destiny 2 on PC yeah. for basically all of year one. So the faded engrams are actually still doing me a favor. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's important to remember that not everybody out there has poured the amount of hours in that a lot of the hardcore players have. And mm-hmm. Zer, for the majority of the player base, is still a very good resource for a lot of people. I don't want him to have Gwis Invest available <laughs> for the sake of Jay's sanity. You know, so like, I, he's still a v- valuable resource for me because yeah. I'm still acquiring exotics I didn't have an opportunity for uh, in year one. Well, he's also a space where you can find random roles on exotics and kind of know what right. they are. Change. Because this week, I think this week on both of the arms on the gauntlets for, I think it's Warlock and Hunter, they have like machine gun perks on them. Yeah. They yeah. Do. So you can't find you can't find that anywhere guaranteed right now. So that's a good point. I, I mean, you just look at the rolls, see if it's something that you like. If not, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> like, yeah, right. You probably already have it, but. I'd like to see him become a little bit more relevant for players who have been at it for the long haul. I mean, because right now, I have no reason to visit Zer. No, I've, got, yeah. I've got no point in visiting him at all. And um kind of sucks. Just a little yeah. bit. Especially if you're somebody who... Uh, I can understand the argument now for people who want him to start selling some Forsaken Exotics. Yeah. Like maybe one Forsaken Exotic a week. I, I can understand that because there's a lot of people out there who haven't gotten anything. Like, hey, I have gotten no Forsaken Warlock armor pieces. None. Boo hoo! Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Just for that, <laughs> you, yeah, get, you get two, two more, more Nova Warps for you. Kill me two more. <laughs> Nova Warps. I'm so sad about two it. Two more. Two more Nova Warps. So broken up that you can't <laughs> double up on Nova Warps for you. That's all you get in your sock this Christmas. You know, you gonna open up your present, unwrap it, boom, Nova Warp. That's what you get this year. You get from not actually making, having an actual jump on your Straight character, Fluffy. 
whatever. Floaty nonsense. Don't gotta jump when you can blink. Oh, what's oh oh what's, oh, oh, oh oh that's unfortunate. Oh, how unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I could, I could see, I could see the argument that some people will want him to start selling Forsaken Exotics now. You know, Forsaken's yeah. been out for a couple months. That's my I, thing. It's like I gotta just say, I I feel like, like Forsaken now since we're moving on to the next thing, it feels like Zer should have the Forsaken Exotics. Yeah. Should put that into the thing. They right. should just become part of the table. What because, if? I mean, just for the terrible RNG guys, or you know, just whatever. You know, it it feels like like why are you just gonna limit Zer now to just year yeah. one stuff? We were, you know, <laughs> right. you know we're going to we're in, like, come on, Zerb, bring something, man. We're dude. into so, the game now. Like everybody's playing now. Why yeah. you well, yeah, I agree. Inventory? I agree. I think I think with on Tuesday, I think this upcoming weekend you'll see him yeah. with God forbid a one eyed mask or a Ooh. if we sold sure, all of the what if he away. had every OP exotic for each character, a one eyed mask. I don't know what warlocks would get. Chromatic and he was invest for Hunter, I guess. I don't know. Maybe. No, no Dad or shards. Though. What are the Stormcaller boots called? You guys Geomags, remember the exotic ones? The Geo okay. Geomags. That's probably the rarest exotic I've seen people have, but that thing sucks, man. Talk about <laughs> every round you have a super and countdown. Well, you don't even do anything. You just run in a circle <laughs> to build up your super. Yeah, kill one guy. Next thing you know, I'm getting I'm getting Kamehameha, Kamehameha away by this guy. Baby. I'm like, yeah. are you, like bro. <laughs> Please. Sad about those warlocks. <laughs> Sad about them. <laughs> someday um yeah, supreme asks do you think that we should get weapon rolling rolling back yeah yeah of course i want everything the gunsmith used to do in destiny one back i want the Thank gunsmith you. bounties i want the specific weapons that only he had with mm -hmm. the same weapon with three different roles you could, you yeah. could purchase i don't think that held the game back at all i think that was yeah. a really good thing and i'm yeah. i'm sad about it not being available if i'm if i remember correctly you could still re-roll like year, year one, one or year two weapons in year three, but they couldn't be brought forward in terms of but, power um, level. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd 100 percent be down with that. I I just want that event that they talked about this summer. I want Arms Week. Arms Week. What happened to that? Arms Week? <laughs> they oh talked my about. God, it. I remember Arms Week. Man. I got so excited when I saw it. It is. I was like, fucking rad. Give me that. Yeah. It it's on the shelf with trials right now, dude. <laughs> and faction rallies. <laughs> Faction I don't ever want to see faction rallies ever again. <laughs> they just need to do something different, man. I like the fact of being like, man, screw you, new monarchy for you want call, baby. You know, I love that stuff. That was I love that too, man. but rolling public events to get four times whatever it was you went and got in the and lost yeah. sector to farm coins yeah. was just a very <laughs> Like a drastic mi misuse of resources, or yeah. when it was on Mars and you just go rolling in into EP with like I don't. Know, oh yeah, you had to jump off the map because you'd have your <laughs> yeah because a public event would happen and you would end up getting yep yep yep. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, I, factions. I want to return, maybe not in rally form. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I I did kind of like the competition for like the weekly weapon. They needed to be better than what they were. Yeah. Like every time better Dead activity. Orbit. Yeah, every, anytime Dead Orbit won, it was just like a, a groan across the cro there, across the cosmos because their weapon was always garbage. But um, yeah, I mean, faction stuff, I'd love to see that return. You know, yeah. It's about time. Arms Week, I have no idea what happened to that, Dan. I want it so bad. <laughs> it just disappeared, man. Along with all of the exotic catalysts that were going to be tied to it. There were a few that were going to be tied to Arms Week that yep. just never <laughs> dropped because that event never happened. Sad about it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so it goes. We'll find we'll we'll find out that it's tied something. to the forges. That would actually be kind of cool. Is that they tied yeah. it to the forges? It seems know. like it would match. You know. Yeah. Like yeah. Match. But as for re-rolling, yeah, man. Like I don't understand yeah. why we only got that for like four months one time in year one of D one. Why why was yeah. that only a thing there? That was that was a huge benefit of um of the gunsmith. You know, just yeah. go up and and that that was a great. It was a great sync for a lot of the currencies back in D1, and uh, that could that could definitely work here in D2 as well. Just go and reroll your guns, reroll your armor. Right now, it sucks getting armor sometimes that just has none of the scavenger or like ammo reserve perks that you're looking for. I'd yeah. love yeah. to be able to reroll that. That'd be great. Super gnarly. All right, I think that's all for the questions that we have currently. Well, right on. So does that mean we are at the end of the show? I believe so. Right on. Right Say it on. Is so bad. <laughs> when actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss you.
Oh, let me see two, man. Let me see. Wait, let me look. Is this way right? Wait, this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maurice, right away, no, it's this way. Where I am. Where I, am. Hug, off screen. <laughs> I can't. I, I don't remember. We'll fix it in post. Book. We'll fix it in post. You Just hug. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> we'll do. Well, right on. Thank you all so much for tuning in to episode 180 of the Planet Destiny podcast. And a very special thanks to our guest, one actual PvP Lord himself. Thanks for being here tonight, man. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you guys for the invite. It's been really fun. Really fun. Yeah, it was great Good having you here. You. This this was a really fun show. I enjoyed it. it was a lot of uh, a lot of great conversation. You've got a wonderful perspective, in my opinion. This guy's got the right opinions. You can take it from me. Confirm a lot of that stuff. Confirm. That's right, my man's. But uh, before we get on out of here, we're gonna let you know where you can find our guest. Let him shill his stuff out there. Let him. Uh, he's gonna let you know what he's got coming up this week. One actual. Where are you? What you doing, man? Well, you can find me. Twitch.tv slash one actual, also on Twitter as one actual. Stream really early. So if you're like European and whatnot, it's perfect for you, all my Americans. If you're staying up all night, you know where to find me at 2 a.m. Pacific Standard. And uh, if you guys need a laugh, I pride myself on more being an entertainer and being comedic over all other things. Everything else is just extra. So if you need a laugh, you're ever feeling down, you want to feel like family and a community that appreciates you, just not watch another show, we freaking bring that over there. It's a lot of fun. So hope to see you there. If not, I hope you smiled while you were here. I just see you right now, you know? <laughs> Either way, it works for me. There you go. If you're in the live chat, we just popped that link there. Go give the man a follow. Go give him a sub. Really entertaining content. Mm -hmm. But you said 2 a.m. Pacific time, right? When you start? I am actually a legit night owl. I, I, I live during so the night. you are oh, streaming good. at 5 a.m. Eastern time for me. Yep. Holy mm -hmm. moly. That's dedication. Your boy TBL <laughs> is off. In the shattered throne of Cinder Realm, <laughs> asleep at that time. <laughs> but this don't, hey, I, don't sleep in the throwaway. Don't sleep in the throwaway. They'll get you every time. Oh man! Nice Unless you're up by the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But right on, man. Thanks once again for joining us tonight. It was a pleasure to have you here. Yo, thank you, fellas. Right on, and of course, before we get out of here, we're gonna let you know where you can find us all across the internet. Yo, Mr. Aura, what you got going on, brother? My name is Ara. You can find me twitch.tv slash Ara weekday uh, afternoons and weekend mornings doing just about everything that Destiny has to offer. We just did a, a, a about a week through the Shattered Throne solo. Uh, did it flaw or almost did it flawlessly, but shapes got in the way. Shout out to Ninja with Noel because the shapes got the best of me, my dude. Uh, you find me on Twitter, evil Ara, 3VIL underscore A U R A. Right on. Congrats on, on the clears and uh, rest in peace, Ninja. <laughs> Dan, what you got going on, man? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Danfinity, but the I's are L's. You can find me on Twitch almost every day now. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Danfinity doing that PVE content you love so well. Uh, you can also find SideQuest Sunday, my podcast that is currently in its off season, but you can go back and listen to episodes that have like TBL or Aura or like, you know, people, people like Lupo or like, or like you know, in the, next, the next season. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to call him up. I'm going to call him up next season. One Do actually you down. You down? I am down. Hey, got it. Let's get it. Let's get You're it. In. All right. On cool. One. Yeah. So you can <laughs> find that wherever uh, podcasts can be listened to. Right on. SideQuest Sunday, great show, great show. It's fun, fun. I enjoyed being on it. It was uh, that was that was a fun time there with you and uh, you and them telling campfire stories. Oh, it was poison wonderful. ivy. Go <laughs> <laughs> listen to the episode; oh it's God. great. You have yeah. to listen to that episode. It's so good. That was fun. That was a fun time. Of course, my name is the Black Link. You can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet: Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all at the Black Link. This week is going to be a very, very busy week, of course, with Black Armory going on. We'll be having live streams, you know, every day of the week, Monday to Friday, uh, starting at around 11 a.m. Eastern Time and going for a couple of hours. Going to be having a lot of news videos coming out on the Planet Destiny YouTube channel this week as well as we get into Black Armory and start digging through all of that brand new content. We've got the dawning starting this week, too, so be ready for that. We do know there's going to be a quest with a very special lady, one Ava Levante, finally making her way back to the tower. It's been like... Several years. Everybody thought she was dead. Turns out she was baking cookies. Got to be some damn good cookies. 
All right. That is going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in to episode 180 of the Planet Destiny podcast. We'll catch you all next week. Have fun in Black Armory. Bye, everybody. <laughs>